Tackle talk, tournament talk, and how the hell to drive a boat in rough water. All that coming up right now on Tackle Shop Live, starting right now. Man, oh man, how's everybody doing? We're running a little late tonight. Had about a million things going on. Trying to get everything together, take care of customers, last minute customers. <laughs> customers always first, right? So, man, John Cop, how you doing? I'm awake, John. What's up, Mark? Andre Albernez, what's up, Andre? James Hawk, Roland, how are you doing? Tom Young, Janelle Musser, I guess. How's everybody doing, man? Thanks a lot for stopping by another edition here at Tackle Shop Live. Man, we got a we got a we got a show tonight. It's it's uh it's gonna be a little uh, off the cuff here, but we're gonna we're gonna roll right through it like we always do. Um, like to thank everybody from YouTube stopping in. James Hawk, thanks a lot, man. Got a couple, couple, a uh, bunch of you guys stopping in lately. I appreciate that. Everybody from Facebook live, welcome, welcome, welcome. But uh, tonight, um, you know, for people that don't know, my name is Mike Acord. This is George Acord, and on the end is the famous CG Get the Net Gottwald. <laughs> I got you, bro. I didn't have your mic turned on. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to say. I mean, it would pop at me or something. Uh, or no, no, no. Go no, a little no, crazy no. or whatever. But, um, yeah, Michelle Renee, how you doing, man? Uh, beers look delicious. Thank you. Yes, Mike. We, uh, after a day like today, we needed to have a couple cold ones. And uh, that's exactly what we had to do. Mike Barr's in the house. Ed Renoski. Kyle, how you doing? Man, a bunch of, bunch of old faces uh, here, here tonight. Tom Young, what's happening? And a bunch of new faces are stopping in. So welcome, everybody, uh, to Tackle Shop Live, where we talk tackle, we talk technique, and we just have a good old time. Right on? Mm-hmm. Right on. Absolutely. <laughs> so a little, uh, little, little, uh, little fast pace tonight before we even got this thing started, man. Yeah. Hey, zero to 100, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Corbin, you were out fishing all day today. Man, you were fishing like the last three days. Hardcore in it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been uh, it's been changing up a little bit you know rivers yeah. dropping clearing up but it's you know we're still catching fish well, that's Su- good super fluke definitely time of the year a couple top water baits and uh of course you got to talk about the wacky rig senko and you know, yeah you know it was really cool I mean, you're talking about me going fishing we all went fishing yeah. this past weekend man and that was just that was just great well I was, I was gonna touch on that because yeah. you know uh here at the store we had a bunch of people um, stopping in throughout the week and saying, "Hey, man, I saw your pictures on uh, on Facebook. I uh, saw so you guys look like you had a great time. We had a great time. We did. We did. Caught a lot of fish. Um, we had some big fish. We had some small fish. We had some, you know, smaller fish. We had a little bit of everything. It was fun. Yeah. It was a good time. Great time. We had some chicken. Had some chicken. Corbin cooked up a big old chicken. Yeah. yeah. So it was good nice. Trip. It was nice to be uh, out there with." Uh, with all the guys, uh, Steve Becker was with us. Um, uh, cameraman Nick was with us. That was that was nice. And um, Pool, who Mikey Pools was with Mikey us. Pool, yeah. yeah. And us three. So it was it was a good time. You know, it was like a little uh, little out of work bonding. I don't know about all that. <laughs> it was bonding. 
We're fishing. We were bonding. Yeah, yeah. We were bonding with fishing rods in our hands. Yep. That's that's important. Um, yeah, Mike Barr, how you doing, buddy? We caught some smallies. Yeah, it was a good time. Definitely a good time. Um, Andre, I try. I didn't. I, you know, the funny thing is, Andre, uh, I I was all ready to try your hooks, and um, we were at the boat ramp, and we were getting our gear together, and I uh, last minute I jumped on with Corbin. Ah, and then didn't I say about uh, I wanted to try Andre's hooks? I didn't oh, have yeah. them with me. Oh yeah, I mean hooks. it was halfway through the day, and I'm like, I'm like, oh man, I, I know Andre's going to ask me about them hooks, and uh, I, I'm going to try them, bro. I promise. Well, and, I promise. And I'm sure when we touch on this later, uh, I mean, we we did try some different hooks this weekend, and I, I like them. Yeah, I like them. yeah, we did. We tried so. the VMC uh, closed ring um, uh, extra wide gap hook, and that was a nice hook that that uh, worked out really well. Nice sharp. Hook didn't have to worry about the line getting caught up in that in that little uh in that little space there. Tiny you know? gap, yep. yeah. Yeah, in, in a little gap. So that worked out really well. Um the other thing we tried was uh some eight pound braid uh to a floor uh to a fluoro coated card and coated leader, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what that was? Yeah, but we also had eight and ten pound uh eight braid. and Brand. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the the rod I had had eight pound on it, and it casted like a million miles. You know, so it it made a big difference, and especially in that clear water when you're trying to you know, you know, uh, catch catch a spooky fish. It really really helped out really well. So that was that was pretty cool. We tried tried that. We tried um, you know some new baits and threw slung slung some new baits around. Uh, so it was a good day. It was a good fun day on the water. Um. So yeah, that was Absolutely. good. Yeah, yep. that's uh, our big one day a week that me and Mike get to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, speaking, always make the most of it. Speaking of that, uh, Saturday is the Toys for Tots tournament up on Sunbury. Yep, and Corbin and George are fishing that tournament together uh, Saturday morning. Um, they're going to go up and terrorize the west branch of the Susquehanna River. I take it. <laughs> We might go north. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We, we might run both. We might we might see how far 40 gallons of gas can get us. <laughs> I mean, we might just go for a $140 boat ride plus fuel. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's for a good cause. Um, uh, you know, it's Toys for Tots. So you bring a toy along and I think it was a $150 entry fee and it goes all, all for a good. Uh, well, that good includes cause. the $10 walleye entry. I didn't tell George about that yet. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a walleye lunker pool. Oh. Sounds that, good to me. Oh yeah, <laughs> catch some giant walleyes up oh, there, I man. I'm telling you, we we caught some giant walleyes up in that West Branch. Hey, Mike, you had that one that was like nine pounds. Oh, man. that thing was huge, yeah. man. That thing was a monster. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Sounds like that's going to be a good time. And then Saturday, me and George are going to jump in the boat and fish the Conowingo uh, Open Series uh, down on the Conowingo Pool, um, and we're going to try our luck down there and see what happens. Looking forward to that tournament, and that Derby. We've been talking to a lot of guys that were that we're that are going so it's going to be neat to do that um we're staying local this weekend staying yep. local yep yep staying local we're so, dying we're dying to head up to up up north where the insane bite is but um we're a little little taught <clears throat> little tied down right now to the shop so we are fishing hardcore local yep yep so uh last week was and we discussed it a little bit was the kayak tournament uh 147 Boats. We're here. Kayaks. Kayaks. That's Consider, awesome. Consider it a boat. Uh, Did you see any so, of the results from that? Well, I, I saw that the guy who won it, um, he had 183 inches. So, uh, well, we uh, had a bet on that. We had a bet on that. And that's why I brought it up. Well, I wrote it down. Yeah. So, because I know how you like yeah. to manipulate. Wait, no, just, it was 183, maybe maybe a fuzz hair over that. Well, guess what? 183.5 to be you exact. Beat, you beat Corbin by one inch. Yep. To win the bet. Yep. Jody Jody Queen got first from West Virginia. Yeah. 183.5. Yeah. Jo Second was back, back to back. Ewing Minor of Virginia. Virginia. 182.75. And third was Drew Gregory. With 181 inches. That that Jody Queen guy? Yeah. Back to back. He won last year. Oh. 
back to back. But no. didn't is, what is that? Is that an 18 and a half inch? Did you say Corbin 18 and a half inch average? 18 and a quarter? Uh, not it's like 18 and a quarter. A little 18 over. and a quarter. Yeah. yeah. There that's, was there was that's that's, that's pretty yeah. good. There was oh, yeah. 50 fish of 19 inches or better um, submitted. Wow. Wow. That, that's, that's awesome. That's really good. That is good. Um, and the anglers were allowed to fish, you know, a huge stretch of Susquehanna River, the the majority of the main stem. And yeah. uh, the farther north that uh, you seem to go, the better the the bite. So, it well, was I wouldn't say the better the bite, but the bigger the fish bite, better the big fish bite. No, that, that could be. I, yeah. I, I, I know I talked to uh, one kayaker. For example, we fished on Sunday and we caught like three fish between six guys on top water. On Saturday, I talked to a, a, a guy that was in that tournament north. Yeah. He had over 50 fish on the top water himself. Yeah. And no, sun, sa Sunday, the same day we fished. Saturday, they caught a lot of fish on top water. So it just seemed like the farther north that they were, the, there was the a guy, better the fishing. There was a guy who finished in 40, 40th place, uh, third, third, third tournament. Wow. Third tournament. First real big tournament. So he was real excited to be in it. And he had, um, what do you say, 47 fish the first day. And... 37 fish the second day because he figured out that you know it wasn't a numbers game he wanted to start concentrating on big fish so he got a quick limit and then he went looking for big fish and so his numbers went down a little bit but he was catching a lot of fish yeah and, and that was right right out here so a couple well no it wasn't right out here because the bottom end of the of the tournament waters was um Gold's york haven right. dam yeah. yeah that's where he was he oh, was okay. he was just just north of there yeah just north of york haven he was on the bottom stretch of it and um, he had 80, 83 inches, 83 inches on day two, 86 inches on day two and 70 something inches on day one. Huh. Yeah. I had a big conversation with him. He enjoyed the hell out of himself. Yeah. Had a blast. He's definitely going to do it again. That was his, that was his third tournament he ever, he ever fished. So, wow. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and I've, I've been kind of following this whole kayak thing from day one, but not like into the nuts and bolts of it. This this is pretty impressive. Oh yeah. Um, we, this particular series is sponsored by BASS. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it is there's one tier, there's one level. You know, you're gonna fish the Bass Open Series Hobie Kayak Tournament, and you know Hobie is a sponsor. BASS runs it. Um. So you're 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 competing at, on one tier. It's not like it's not like club and 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 mid level and and top level. And the other thing I like about it is if you like to travel, the schedule is diverse. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, they're all over the place. I saw a couple of the competitors on the water on Sunday, and you know the you can just see I've been following you know. Um, being in the tackle business, I've been following the rise of the kayak uh, accessories and designs. And wow, uh, these guys are well equipped for a very efficient fishing. Yeah. I, it, uh, they've I, got power I, poles. Impressed. They've got power poles. They've got pedal drives, yeah, electric motors. They've got. Oh yeah. Oh, no, they're not allowed electronic motors in this. Only in, this in that series. circuit. Right. But there's a lot of them that 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 have them for practice, and they're allowed to use them for practice. Yeah. There's a there's another <clears throat> there's another well, just about all the kayak series allow electric motors. Yes. Yeah. And 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 of course the Hobie doesn't because they have the uh, patent. Pat, patented. Yeah. Um, a lot of the kickers. A lot of the trolling motor companies have responded with you know little drop in units that drop right through the kayak. Cool stuff. Spot lock. Cool stuff. Which, you know, the number one problem with kayak fishing is boat control. Right. Because they're they're very light. They move with the slightest wind touch current. of wind yeah. or current. So to have a 
drop in, you know, spot lock system. Well, let me tell you something. Awesome. Me and Corbin were fishing along and we watched this guy work those grass beds on on Sunday with this little uh paddle system. Yeah. He was straight freaking rolling, man. He was working that like anybody's boat would do. Yeah. And he was making these he was covering water, making he was fishing a topwater lure. Yep. Covering a million plopper plopper to um, be exact. Uh, yeah, working a million uh grass beds. And he was flat out getting it done and it was impressive as it hell. Was up river. It was upriver. Upriver. Upriver, yeah. Like yeah. He, he wasn't going down. My man was paddle, ch he was chugging up the mine yeah. river. <laughs> chucking yeah, a whopper was. plopper. Yeah. I mean he he impressed the hell that, out that, of that was impressive. I, I watched uh, I watched one of them down down in the stretch that I was fishing. And I mean I, I watched him for a while coming down and man, his boat control was exceptional. Yeah. Um, I saw him catch a fish, I saw him lose a fish. Um, well, it wasn't like my experience when I went out on the kayak. I could tell you that much. Oh, you mean the ones that are still in George's garage that me and him have to deliver to your house? <laughs> no, 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 no. He was in a. I was in a. He was in a sit on top, a, man. A hardcore, -blown... hardcore, freaking uh, old town. I don't know what the hell it was. Old town, something or other. It was a serious fishing. Sit kayak. on top, fishing kayak. Got myself all excited to go out with this fellow. He asked me to go. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of myself, but the frustration level was like. <laughs> Way up here because well, all fairness to the conversation, they were paddle. No, oh, yeah, no there, pedal. there was no pedals. This no, was no a pa this was a paddle kayak, which 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 many of them are. Yeah. Well, well many not, of the customers not so much anymore. Well, ma many customers have the the paddle. I mean, they're pedaling, they're pat, yeah. they're 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 flapping and they're controlling motoring. Corbin, you should have seen that man. You know, you want to make that perfect cast, and you're like <laughs> fired in there, and everything's cool, and all of a sudden, you know stuff starts moving and you start you know trying to work that bait back and you start twisting and you're twisting and you're twisting and you're like this and you're like okay i'll pick the paddle up and straighten back out and right here, look, look, duke, you get bit right and then you're like oh, all right drop the paddle and the paddle starts floating away you're grabbing it you know <laughs> so, so didn't Jeez. take me very long man i was all twisted up and um i it presses me when those guys are out there fishing is because it's so much involved to it you right. know learning how to do the paddle how to how to um you well know, the, control pedal, the, the pedal the pedal thing is revolutionary that is revolutionary if i, I mean, was going to do it flutter, i would definitely have they can flutter those I would, things i and, would have me one of them bad bad boys with the pedals for sure or it was pretty cool it was, it was cool. pretty cool to yep. have that big big uh, event in our in our town yep in, yep. Our, in our hood yep it was neat yeah. yep, speaking was, of the tournaments yeah we got a couple oh yeah yeah we got some very interesting developments let's all bust into this tournament yes, talk let's right talk about a little bit now yeah we have a ton of tournaments going on there's a lot going on right now and that went on here last week yeah last week excuse me uh we had a um uh, I, I don't want to do a shout out. Can I, can I do a shout out? I, I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to shout out to uh, Square Mile Restaurant, Public House. Yeah, and uh, uh, Square Mile Public House up in Mountville, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yep. uh, straight up, straight up the road from us, maybe three or four miles. Um, they treated us uh, fellas tonight to. I had a pulled pork sandwich. Is that what you had? I had a uh, pit beef. A pit beef sandwich. I had a pit beef. And, and Corbin had a pit pit beef. And then macaroni and cheese. I'm telling you, man, those sandwiches were unbelievable. And uh, they treated us to dinner tonight. So we, I just wanted to give a shout out. Well, I mean, the, 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 call, the, the, purpose, the purpose for the little dinner was uh, uh, um, our, our friend who owns that restaurant, his son is um, heading off to college in a couple weeks. So yep. they were having a little. They were having a little post graduation yeah, party. Yeah, sort of like a grad. They really, you know, how I don't care what it was. I got a sandwich. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy. As well, that. they had they had some nice catering there. So, K okay, so, man. Yep. Thank you, guys. Uh, congrats in the next chapter of your life. Thank you for the sandwiches. Yep. We appreciate it very much. That's the. And if you're ever uh, uh, looking to stop into the shop here now, you know this is a good combo deal here. You 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 take the wife or the girlfriend on a road trip. <laughs> And you tell them that you're going to take them to a wonderful lunch, which you will. Yeah. <laughs> but on the way, you swing by SFT. Yeah. 
and uh, you know, and then you roll get right her, up, get right? her on the pump fake. Yeah. Check out the, <laughs> yeah. check out the sites and what have you, and then you're one mile away from a uh, uh, square awesome. mile public house, which is a uh, awesome little restaurant, fantastic spot. Everybody loves it. Yep, uh, cool so, place to chill. for everybody. So, yeah. shout out to those guys. Thank yeah. you so much. That was unexpected, and I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, George, what what tournament are we going to talk about yeah, first? Man, Do you want to talk about like what's going on right now? I was trying to follow all these tournaments. There were so many going on. Um, I think we should talk about the the major league fishing one right now with all the controversy going on. I don't know what controversy. Which, which part? A bunch of people not fishing. Yeah, seven. Oh, angles. that's not really controversy. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty unbelievable. Well, I mean, seven people not fishing that tournament. Well, there's seven people that aren't fishing. Six of them have COVID. Yeah. Uh, pretty unbelievable one of them's attending a family event yeah yeah it is kind of unbelievable yeah this is something yeah. that's never happened before seven well, you know i mean i we, we you have really, one you have one here you have one there but we have seven we don't really and, have all the facts yeah we don't have the facts but we you know we kind of know kind of it assume ba bass fan you can assume well bass fan broke the story last night um uh two of the anglers um, I believe it was Mark Daniels and Dustin Cannell. They they were unable to reach them for comment. Um, and there was uh, Hunter Shyrock, I believe. Hunter Fletcher. Um, and Luke Clausen. They're both in a hospital. One in Scranton, one in Plattsburgh, uh, dealing with some COVID symptoms and complications. And uh, yeah, so yeah, COVID has uh, has struck. Yeah. COVID so so struck. they're uh, so they're making and what was kind of I think controversial is they're making this um, points change uh, points change yeah. yeah to the whole schedule. So they're they're saying now that um for certain part of and a certain number of the championship uh points for a certain part of it. not, no, ang all. not, not angler of the year right, right. so they're going to not they're angler gonna of the crown year the angler of the year right and then they're going to drop then th then you're allowed to drop a tournament for the rest of it the to title to qualify for red crest and uh heavy hitters and all that stuff right yeah, yeah the, the red crest and the heavy hitters, which, you know, yeah, may hurt some people. Yeah, well, you know, um, sometimes when George, you drop, I, I heard you say too that um sometimes when you drop a tournament, well, yeah, you uh drop out of contention. Yeah, so that and and we we've seen that happen in our in our club one one year. And we, yeah, we've seen it happen locally, but we also saw it happen um with BASS because they're dropping a tournament. They they are or they did. They are. Oh, they're dropping a tournament too. Yeah, and uh, that's going to cost somebody. I forget who it was. A classic berth. Oh. But 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 that drop was preseason. Right. Right. So it's not like it's it, not like it's it costing right. them. Right. It is costing them, but it's not technically costing them. Right, because on it was, paper it's costing. Yeah, that's yeah, different than this. Yeah. This is this is mid season. This is rule change. Yeah, this is last week. And and it was voted on by the board of directors who are the fishermen. Yes. So the fishermen decided to do it. They decided to um you know possibly shoot themselves in the toe for this uh Yeah, I don't know if it was just uh like uh helping our buddies out or whatever, but you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it shakes out because yeah. if if people drop out of Red Crest because they had to drop a tournament, that's a big deal because that yeah. was guaranteed money. And if other people who weren't weren't going to be in all of a sudden get in, <laughs> uh, it's going to be very interesting um, to see how that works. But uh, yeah. would you call it possibly an MLF dumpster fire? Well, I mean, I, I don't mean, know. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I mean, you know, it's not. It's voted on yeah. by the anglers. So it should be interesting. It yeah. should be interesting. So, yeah, today is day one of the next to last Bass Pro Tour event on Lake Champlain, which, you know, is where we should all be going. 
And <laughs> Matt Lee weighed in 103.05 pounds. You know, keep in mind, every fish counts over two pounds, uh, two pounds and over. Um, 103 was his total weight. 103.05. That's incredible. Man. Second place, John Cox has 47.15. You're kidding me. My money's on him. So, you Dang. know, we got Matt Lee has a little bit of a lead there. Um, and he must have hit the mother load. He, he wow. did. It's Holy. early. He said he was popping around. Oh, yeah, I know it's early, but can you imagine that one day like yeah. that? The yeah. difference? Well, what happens is that these cool. are the, these are the, uh, the preliminary rounds and and each group fishes two days, but which, the which winner, is, which is gathered together, right? No, you have Group A and Group B. Yeah, but the, uh, but you fish two days, right? Right. Group A right. fish today, and they're going to fish again. And it... Group B fishes tomorrow. Yeah. Group A fishes. Yeah, but so Group A fishes the two days go together though. Yes. Yeah. The wait. Yeah. Yeah. But the winner of the group yeah. goes straight to the championship. Right. Does not fish the knockout round. Right. It's gonna be hard so, for to catch up. I'm to pretty him. sure Matt Lee, <laughs> you're going is through going straight to the championship. Yeah. And then when you get to the knockout round, it goes back to zero. Yes. But what was interesting, yeah. um, he said he was he was, you know, planning on catching some smallmouth, and he was he was bouncing around and wasn't getting much going. So he decided to check on some largemouth, and he rolled into an area and he threw a gunfish, Lucky Craft gunfish. Mm -hmm. Walking bait. Yep. And uh, a little one come up and popped it. So he, you know, casted it back out again and caught one that had 10 big ones with it. And uh, seven hours later, had a three. And I watched it. It was like every freaking cast. And he was using a Sanko, four inch Sanko. And Gary Yamamoto can now put a guest wing on his uh, million dollar house mansion. because <laughs> you should have seen this pile of Sankos on the floor of this boat. Wow. That, that, I mean, that were because he was Texas rigging these things. Yeah. So it was one fish per bait. And I mean, these things, these fish were big, what, large they mouths. They weren't to general. Matt Lee. Yeah. He's not. He's not a. He's I not a, he Ber a Berkeley guy. No, no. that's uh, Jordan. Oh, Jordan is his brother. Uh. Matt Lee's a free get him, agent. Get him confused. He's a free agent. So that's day one. Uh, and and what another thing that was interesting is you had guys from the north end to the south end. And when I say the south end, I'm talking South Bay, you know, at the very lower end of the river, which, you know, if they all launched out of Plattsburgh like a normal tournament, that would have been about a 90-mile run for – Octafo, but they're allowed to drive down and launch wherever they want. So, oh, really? Yeah. So he went down and launched down there, which, by, by the way, to let you know how big Plattsburgh, I mean, how big Champlain is for those who have never been there. If you're staying in Plattsburgh for a tournament and you decide to go pre fish down at Ticonderoga, that's like an hour and 45 minute car ride. I know. <laughs> I, I remember the first. I remember the first time I went to wow. Champ. I mean, Corbin. I, I I remember the first time I went to Champlain. I was so excited, man. We're driving and we're driving and we're driving forever, and we finally come up on uh, the lower end of the lake there, and and I see it, you know, from the road, and we cross over this bridge and we cross over the the lake, and I'm like, oh man, I am so excited. I can't, man. Champlain, I'm going to be there, and we cross over, and we drove for another two hours. <laughs> You want to talk about deflating wow. the old balloon right there, bro. I was like, ah, oh, man. But we, you know, that's how big that lake is. We kept driving. And then you could see a glimpse off of it off to the, you know, off in the horizon yeah. there. You see it and you get excited again and you're still driving. We drove for two more hours. That uh, is one big pond. That's a wow. big, big body of water. So, yeah, that's a big body of water. Um, runs due, due north, due, due north and south. And uh, it's um, a, a lot of it. Uh, the upper half of it's 10 miles wide. Now, there is islands going mm -hmm. down the middle of it, but it's 10 miles wide. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. She's a big one. She's and, a big and it's a phenomenal, absolute bucket list destination. If you've not been to Saint uh, to uh, Champlain, gotta um, go. you, you got to go. Gotta you go. literally have to go. You have to plan it. 
You have to put it in your schedule. You have to go. It yeah, is... It's one of those lakes where they can have these big tournaments on and it's not going to hurt it like it does some of them, you know? Yeah. Where, you know, bass goes and, and then people go there all the time and they, they start hurting the population, you know? And um, this one, I don't think it's ever going to hurt it. There's so much fishing. So many fish. Wow. It's giant. Although the old South Southern end ain't fishing like it used to. Yeah, I mean, they, it, they drug a lot of fish from down there up through. Yeah, up but through. Uh, see, I disagree with you on that, Mike. I, I mean, come on, bring, you, bring. you know, you can you can you can highlight a body of water by having a major tournament on there, but the, but the outright claim that it hurt it, you know, I mean, I are, guess to a certain serious? extent. Are you serious? I guess to five a six extent. straight years in a row with the, with the boats going down there and dragging limit after limit, day after day. Uh, week after I week, I got the popcorn for this one. <laughs> all the way from, <laughs> all the way from, uh, you know, the south part of the lake, all the way 135 miles away, then dumped in the water. Those fish are never going to go back. They're ever, ever going to get back here. So it changed the fishery down there, and you've seen it happening every year. Um, from the time when, um, uh, who made it popular down there? Was that Timmy Horton? Yeah, Timmy Horton George, made, made it really popular. Well, Timmy Horton had like like he was done fishing. He was he left, fished for two hours, came in with twenty some pounds. He was he was ahead of everybody by millions of pounds. He wow. came back and he ate a pizza at the boat ramp. Um. So ever since that tournament to now, how many years has that been? Long time. It's been a long time, and the fishery is nothing like that anymore down there. I mean, what did our man Atafo do today down there? Uh, he was doing pretty good. I think he was in fifth place, but you know, he, 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 he's not in the hundred pound club. Yeah. You know, um, I think a lot of the South, the, the Ticonderoga end of the lake, I think, I mean, it definitely fishing pressure has affected it to a certain extent, but a lot of that bite down there, um, has to do with the habitat changing. Yeah, and uh, I, and I'm not saying there's none of that you know, going on, but where the grass <clears throat> is, um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's definitely a. Well, I'm just saying, I, you know, as opposed to Lake Oneida, totally changed, not to near the fishery that it was before bass was there. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, come on, I mean, everybody knows that's what goes on when bass goes to town. You know, people are a love hate relationship. Kentucky, well, Kentucky Lake's different, but even Kentucky Lake with the ledge fishing, when that was like exposed, pissed a lot of guys off. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a sport we love. It's what happens. I guess that's I'm a not topic, saying it's topic for another yeah, another time because yeah. you know, I I, I just it's think inter it's interesting. I just think it's so easy to 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 you know point at one factor, and it's it's really not. I mean, fisheries are so you know changing all the time. Yeah, I'll give you a, a local case in point. Last year, the Susquehanna River was completely dead. No one could catch any fish. All the fish were dead and gone. It was horrible. And this year, you're beating 18 and 19-inch fish off with a stick, and I'm pretty sure they didn't grow that big in one year. The fishery last year changed. It's due, not, it's not, it's, that's not what I'm saying. Due to, um, you know... Uh, yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Weather and and situations like that, and 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 you know, Champlain. I'm not saying that fishing weather, pressure has I, affected it. Yeah, I'm not saying weather. And it's 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 definitely moved some fish around, and it's definitely changed the. Lower yeah, but end look at the bit. upper end. Look at the upper end. It hasn't it hasn't affected it. There's so many there's so many fish up there. There's a totally different population of fish up there, um, and there's so many smallmouth that it really hasn't affected what those guys are catching up there. Plus, all the fish are released, still released up there. But the smallmouth fishing, I mean, you can see it right there, 100, 104 pounds. and all, Those all, were all largemouth. The, the tournaments last year, if they were all largemouth, but the tournaments last year um, where they, they had. one on smallmouth. Well, and, and they yeah. caught crazy amounts of fish. Um, but I'd even say that the upper end of that is not like it was 10 years ago when me and George were there. Yeah, so it does change, absolutely. I don't know if bass is the one changing it, but the uh, fisheries do change.
Um, so we'll see. Huge platform there for when they come in town. It's a huge, gigantic platform, and they video and they and they cover it so well that it's like everybody salivates. I mean, look look what's happening. Look look what's, look what's happening to uh, Thousand Islands. Number of people going up there. Yeah, it, it's it's unbelievable. Everybody everybody wants to go. Everybody wants to be there. Well, look at the catches. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's you know I would I want to go there. Bass because. has been fishing the Thousand Islands since the eighties. Exactly, and, and it's and, probably but, and, and I, but uh, that's what it does. And if it's not, what is a, it like a thousand percent better now than it was then? And 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 um, it takes a big fishery like that, a big body of water where they can go there. And it doesn't have that effect on. That's why I said Champlain, it doesn't have as much effect as a place like Oneida. Oneida was definitely, has definitely been uh, seen its better change. Days. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's great fishing up there. Don't get me wrong, but it's nothing like it was 15 years ago. Fish are a lot bigger. Uh, yeah, but you don't catch near the near numbers of them, you know. We caught I'm big, not sure. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't been on Oneida in 15 years, so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what's going on up there personally. But uh, ah, see, it, now it, you're, you're, just, you're just you're just changing and dodging stuff here. So what you're saying? Doing. I'm, oh, the fish you're, are bigger. You're, you're dodging things. You the know, fish are, yeah, well, but you they, know, you know, from your 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 expertise and reading about these tournaments and seeing what they're catching them on and how many fish they're catching and all this kind of stuff, you know that it's changing places I, like I mean, that. The, look at the open that was there last week too. It was weights weren't. I mean, well, they had a well. That was weather. First yeah. two days were weather, but. You can't. You, you, you're not going to have high weights when you can't fish on the lake. Look at that largemouth bite up there. I mean that that thing. I mean you, they could not fish on the lake. It was it was a it was an east wind, yeah. and that lake runs east west, and that lake is pretty big. Uh, Brent Nelson, how are you doing, buddy? Um, Joseph, welcome, buddy. Better late than never. Um, nice to have you here, Mark Snyder. Um, you know, uh, who else is here? Somebody else said something, uh, back here. Uh, St. Crest is going to be here. Yep. Saturday. We'll see you then brother for sure. He's going to stop the shop. Gary Kellick. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Raystown Lake. Um, you should do all right up there. Top water bite should be. Yeah, that should be rocking and rolling there. I don't know what happened there. What was that? And, um, so, um, yeah, you guys should be all right up there. But uh, thank you, everybody, for stopping in um, to Tackle Shop Live. We are talking tournament talk, and we just kind of got over on the Major League Fishing Big Five event. And now we're... No. One no? Bass B Pro Tour. BPT. Oh, BPT. They're, those are the guys that count everything. Oh, yeah, BPT. They got another division that only counts five. I can't keep it straight. Well, they're trying to... Everybody Everybody knows I can't keep it straight, so it's it's all, they're, it's okay. They're, there's MLF said that five fish limits suck yeah that you know and they gave all these reasons why five fish limits suck i'm all right you know with that. the stress and the harm on the industry the fisheries yeah. to your point exactly yep. then they bought flw and now five fish limits <laughs> they don't suck as much anymore it's okay <laughs> yeah. so we're gonna have some five fish limits for you over here yep and then we're gonna have some Catch all you can catch over here and not taking anything away from any of the anglers, but MLF, make up your mind. Get your mind right. You know, that's exactly right. I mean, you you, you know, they, they found that uh that you know people want to see the five fish. Well, they uh you think because they created a tournament based on your five biggest fish. Yeah. yeah. The Bass Pro Tour created the heavy hitters, yeah. and the way you qualify for the heavy hitters. Is they take your biggest fish from five tournaments, i.e. a Lanka. a virtual limit, a limit mm -hmm. back on the limit. Yep. No limit, limit. Yep. So you know, all I'm saying is, and 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 let me qualify this: we are hardcore tournament fans. We love it. And as fans. We, we are entitled to our opinions. Yeah. We're NASCAR fans. We got lots of opinions. Yeah. We're NFL fans and we got which lots of opinions. Which opinions. Starts tonight? Good God. Um, and so on and okay. so forth. And we're also massive bass heads with, with massive opinions. And I mean, Bass Pro Tour says 
five fish limits suck. You know, the Elite Series sucks. Bass screwed everybody. We're going to start a tour that's angler-driven. Every fish you catch, whatever the, the cut weight is, counts. And they're doing a fabulous job, by the way. As a fan, Love I it. watch every second of it. Their, their commentary board of Marty Stone, um, JT Kenny, JT Kenny, yeah. and the guy with the vest. Um, <laughs> and the girl. What's, what's her name? She's a roving reporter or something. Oh, okay. Well, I, mean, I just think the they eyes. do a phenomenal do. job, yep. right? The coverage is awesome. The website could use a lot of work. Like, basically, I would unplug it from the internet and start over. <laughs> but that's just me. I'm a technical guy. Um, it's, it's pretty bad. It's horrible. The app works better when it works. So, but anyways, uh, not busting on BP2. Just a fan who just got up on a soapbox. For a minute but i'm allowed because i'm a fan yeah uh yeah so tomorrow is day two that's going to be the first day for group b uh randy howe will not be fishing randy howe had to fly home because he had massive dehydration and he wanted to be treated at his hometown hospital so he was able to fly home uh to get medical attention so he's going to be all right from what from what we read yeah. His, his was a dehydration issue. So Randy Howe's not going to be on the water tomorrow. He was a, originally slated to be in Group B. So Group B is going to fish. And, you know, they're not allowed to watch live. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So so they're going out fresh. Yep. Uh, plus, you're going to have a big weather change coming. There's one of the topics we're going to talk about tonight. Yep. There's a big a wind. To to. There's Gotta a big wind here. fixing to blow. So that was, uh, yeah, Bass Pro. Now, last week, we had the other division of MLF. This is the Big Five. This is where you keep your fish. It's called the Big Five because you put them in the live well. Weigh they them were in at, and then release them. They were at the St. Lawrence. What is it? Then you weigh them in and then release them. Yeah. Just so everybody knows. You're not actually, like, keeping them, taking them out of the fishery. No, and, we're not going to uh, cook them. Yeah. Still that, catch release term. Yeah. Yeah. But you weigh them in. But you yeah. weigh them in. Yep. Yeah. Which was previously shunned upon by Bass Pro Tour. Sort of like the Bass Elites. <laughs> Until they bought FLW. <laughs> then it was like seven pound, eight ounce, baby Jesus. We like these limits. <laughs> Anyways, uh, MLF Big Five was at the St. Lawrence. We talked about that a little bit last week. And, of course, the St. Lawrence, you know, again, bucket list. Put it on the bucket. Put it on the list. You got to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't think so, you should have seen the fish. They were whacking up there. Yep. Um, Cody Pike. Good dude, man. Love that guy. Richmond. Yep. Area. James River Stick. Powhatan. Yep. Powhatan. Yep. Powhatan. Pocahontas. Powhatan. I, I don't know. Powhatan. 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 I don't know, but great dude, man. You um, know who else is from Powhatan? Oh, you're going to tell me. Jacob Brosnick. Oh. There's a oh. lot of people from Powhatan. A lot yeah. of fishermen from. Well, Powhatan. now Jacob Prosnick. Yeah, a lot of customers from. Powhatan. Jacob Prosnick has one has is a one, stick. One mission in mind. He is a fish catching, duck shooting, cobia snatching, <laughs> outdoor individual of the highest magnitude. And let me tell you, he's also from Powhatan. Powhatan. Yep. Well, guess Powhatan. what? Cody Pike was. I mean, the leader going in on the last day, uh, Joey Sufuentes. Had a six and a half pound lead going into the last day of the St. Lawrence Big Five. Six and a half pound lead. He was catching 24 pound bags. Five fish, smallie limits that weighed 24 pounds. He caught 12 and a half pounds uh, on the last day because the east wind reared its ugly head and the east wind stalls the current down around Clayton. And when the current stalls, your drift isn't, it's like, it's like, not good. I've it's been there a lot good. of times on East Wind, and we suck there when it's like that. How many times we go there with that East? <laughs> Mike, that... We, you and I actually, when we go to the Thousand Islands, we actually have a 21-page manual on excuses why we suck at the Thousand Islands, okay? East Wind <laughs> is Chapter 3, Page 5. I, it's rule, always rule number one is you don't go there enough. So, boys, I think we got to change yeah. rule number one to go to Rule 3. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, we've been yeah. there a time or two. Well, yeah, and, you know, and, and we're going up in September. It's tough See to that? go up there in September and October, you know, and then you know, hit those 
at that wit, that weather. Yeah. My I'm God. Fine. I'm well, I was just trying to get you guys to go more. Joey oh, yeah, Sefuentes hit the weather. I think me and you should go run up, Corbin. Joey Sefuentes hit the weather. Yes, and it killed him. I understand and he, that. He, Joey, he, I get it. He lost. He I was in that. third place. I totally freaking get it, and, and I'm really feel bad, bad for Cody him. Pike yeah. had an area that was weather protected. Yep. And he said he was using his trolling motor to get his drifts at the proper speed. Yeah. So he was you, strolling. Well, and you know what's funny about that? Like I said, Cody Pike grew up fishing the James River. Yeah. So you want to talk about a guy that understands, you know, moving water. Currents, yeah. Current. That yeah, he's a river guy. Plus, he's a Potomac yeah. river guy. And he's real. I mean, he's good. Yeah. He's, he's good. Um, well, now he's one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. I, I saw up I was, in the hizzy. I was so happy that he won that. Yeah, won on a max cent. You know, so shot again, but flatworm. I, I think it was. I, mean, I think it was green pumpkin. We're congratulating Cody yeah. Pike officially. Yeah. yeah, Cody, congratulations, man. Dude, um, he I'm, said he was fishing. He was trying to win second place. I know, I know. And well, he did that, know, and and more. You know, you know what I found interesting is that Phoenix bonus of thirty-five thousand. It's a big incentive That's, to own a Phoenix. Holy no, crap. No doubt. 35, yeah. Yeah, so Only if you own a Phoenix. 135 grand. 35, it was a Phoenix. That's a yep. big old contingency thing. Wow. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. But, uh, you know, one thing people don't know is this was Cody's rookie year. And uh, wow. I, I think that we could definitely take a step back and say, how about the rookies on all these tour levels that are just winning events i mean tearing it up you know the, they're proving that they belong there that's exactly right and it's well, not just that's like, a, like, it, look at look at them fishing mm -hmm. against a stiff competition in the opens and then yeah. you know they're getting the elites and you know yeah the, the, or in this case the big five and they're holding their own i mean it's it's awesome to see that yeah. for the future of the sport the competitive it proves they belong there proves that they are they getting there. more opportunities now to fish the the but, the uh, these young and up-and-comers are they yeah getting more well, more opportunity before it was just so hard for them to bust into the sport because there was only one one trail. Well, you now got the Toyota Series. Now there's now there's several trails. You got yeah. the Bass Open Series. Mm -hmm. The Toyota Series is a feeder for the Big Five. Mm -hmm. The Big Five is a feeder for the BPT. Mm -hmm. The Bass Open Series is a feeder for the Elite Series. Right? Yeah. Um. So you know they have, and then you got the the below that you have the BFL. Right. Yeah. Um. You have the the TBF does a wonderful job. And so does bass at club level of moving their anglers up from club level. Well, I'm level. just I'm just saying, you know, at that at that, at that professional level where the you know the big money starts rolling in, and um, you know the the stage is getting much bigger. I think there's more opportunities now yeah. than and, there's ever been. So we're well, seeing well, some yeah. of this talent that never could make it before. Yeah, and, and then there's the Fat Cat Newton series, which everyone him and Luke Duncan are part of, no, or whatever North, the North North whatever it is, the national, national professional professional. Or, yeah. Association of Fishing Bass League. Tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. National Professional Fishing League. Yeah. NFPL. NFPL. National Professional Fishing League. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's and, an, uh, they're, and they're trying to, they're and trying there's to, guys there really trying to make a run at it, man. Yeah. And, and trying to make it professionally and, you know, get paid. Yeah. It's, well, yeah. They're getting, hard. they're getting paid. They're getting paid. Yeah. They, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because there's more there's more opportunities out there on, on, where you can get paid and make a living at fishing than there ever has yep. been. So it's good to see that. It is good to see these these guys who are hammers, you know, making it. Yep. It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really cool. So what's uh, what else you got there, George? Ah, uh, the Northern Open, B A S S Northern. Yeah, I want to talk about this because this is going to morph us into our our topic. Our topic. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So uh, their first open, Northern Open. Second. Second. I'm sorry. They, they fished at James. So this is their second Northern Open on the Lake Oneida. Yep. And uh, the guy that won it is a guy by the name of Bill Perkins. And I'm going to tell you something really interesting about Bill Perkins. This was the first bass open that he ever fished. Yeah. Would you like to know something else that's interesting about Bill Perkins? This is the first tournament he ever fished as a pro. Yeah. He's a local boy up there. He fishes team tournaments. Mm -hmm. He's a stick as up a there. rider. Yeah, but he's a stick up there. Oh, he's he's he is, but he'll be the first one to tell you that he's not that guy. He's like, I'm not the guy that people look at and say, that's the guy on this lake. 
No, but he's a hammer up in that region. On that lake? Yeah. Um, a what a cool story, man. Yeah, it's cool. First Bass Open. If you get, hey, first you, tournament as a pro. Might as well wire the first one. to wire. Have fun now because it's all downhill from here. Now, <laughs> here's the, here yeah, to me is the disappointing part about it. Yeah, he didn't. Fish. He didn't fish to James. Didn't fish the first one, so he's not classic eligible. Boy, that would just. But I'll guarantee you, suck. It didn't look like it bothered him too much. No, he, he was, was happy. on top of the world. He was happy, and maybe uh, it's not you know drop not, shot. Maybe the classic isn't a dream for him like it is for a lot of people. But no, yeah. he said he doesn't have any desire to fish professionally. Yeah, he just he jumps. He's jumping into ones that where he thinks he can make a make a run at it and drop shot for Ned Rig. Yeah, I saw that. Drop shot. Ned yeah, rig. I saw there was a lot of Ned Rig stuff involved with the tournament. Um, I saw there was a lot of drop shot involved with it, but I also saw somebody did well with a crankbait, a perch colored crankbait, Strike King crankbait. I saw. Um, uh, was that third place? Maybe Ike did well with a DT8. And D and Ike used a DT8 and um, sneaky little Ike getting his hands on them DT8s. Yeah. Oh, was that an eight? Yeah. Uh, little sucker. Yeah, got connections. S sneaky guy. So George, question he about this whole, him. about this whole classic thing now, right? So since he didn't fish them all, who's taking that classic berth? Or does it go? It, to is, the next, it isn't a classic berth. Or, or does it go to the next guy? No, in line it the goes to the guy that wins. But uh, but then the, it's gone. Oh, so it doesn't go to like the first man. Goes out. away. Oh, goes away. She gone. Yeah. So totally totally goes away. Now here's the interesting thing about this tournament. But I think it I think it gives Yeah. It would it would, it would give one more elite. It, it, yeah, maybe elite or maybe, you know, whatever other category they get in through that that, that person opportunity. Well, yeah. if if they have a classic field of 60 or 60 whatever or whatever that number is, set number. No. They don't have a set number? No. It's always different every year. Well, it could be. Top 50. If somebody fishes a Northern Open yeah. and doesn't qualify for the Classic. Oh, I thought it was like the well, the, cl the Classics that you fished were always 50 in the field. They didn't have all this stuff then. I don't know. Well, I do. <laughs> I don't know. You don't. They didn't even have Bass Opens. No, but they had Federation people getting in. They well, had, that was a set number. They had... um the top 50 from the I guess a federation guy if he would have declined his invite it, they would have been one less five from federation no I I would there was always 50 so if somebody would decline they would move somebody else in there was always 50 they never had, never had less than that number that'd be a good one for somebody who like, fact check fact check it fact check it yeah so yeah it was a lot of drop shot but the thing about it was for a lot of these anglers who were catching fish Day one and day two were unbelievably rough. Yeah, they had an east wind. They had a um, terrible east wind. They had a terrible amount of. And that uh, lake is a big giant bowl. Shallow. That's the problem with it. East west. It's a sh oriented. shallow east west orientated, and it stands up and it gets big and it gets ugly. It gets snotty. And, and they had some real bad weather and they, they had some really bad situations on boats I you know mean, it was interesting about the first day of that tournament yeah they didn't call for that yeah the it was weather, calm as hell in the morning i watched a blast off in the morning it was calm the weather uh the weather reports did not call for that but there was boats that were destroyed in this in this tournament there was there you, always is you know there was people who were hurt in this tournament there was all kinds of stuff going on and, and it kind of gets to what what uh we were we were kind of alluding to with our introduction here you know what what's it take to run that type of water what what what's what steps do you take before you even get into that kind of water how do you how do you take care of your boat how do you run that type of stuff because we've all done it maybe not as much corbin but me and george we've run some really big ugly stuff in, in our careers of of uh, tournament fishing yeah and well, I mean, if you fish competitively yeah. in the Northeast, and and I say competitively because if you're not fishing a tournament, you'll trailer somewhere to fish that day. But, you know, if we're fishing uh, Oneida Lake and we're launching from Oneida Shores 
on the west end of the lake, you know, you got to go where you're going to go. Yeah. If we're fishing Lake Champlain and we're launching out of Plattsburgh, uh, you're in the washing machine if she's blowing right there. You're in the middle of the freaking spin cycle. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Lake Erie. Yeah. And Lake we, Ontario. Uh, but what I'm saying is we, we, we've. We've kind of it's where we, we live. We, we've we've kind of did it's the northeast. The northeast is really bad for this. So we so the people from the northeast kind of get an introduction to this very early and uh, have to deal with this a lot. Um, but even still, even in the northeast, we have, uh, you know, a lot of people who do damage to their boats unnecessarily. Yeah. You know, well, and, it starts with prep. And, you know, it's 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 it is it is start does start with prep um, and then it ends with uh you know, the actual driving of the boat. So um, what, what we thought we would do is touch, touch on some of the prep that we do to our boats and uh, that, that, that just to get ready for this stuff, even if it's not going to blow, we have it ready, ready, ready for it. Right, George. Oh yeah. I mean, you're going to, you, you, you're going to do this stuff anyways. Yeah. But if you're fishing a multi-day event um, on a big, big rough water body of water, like these guys have been, you're going to have to go over several of these steps every night. Yeah. So, and know, I can't tell you how many tournaments I've fished on these waters, these, these three waters right here where I've come back to my hotel at night and there was a boat parked in the parking lot with a 250 strapped on the back deck. Yeah. I've seen it because he didn't do all the steps. No. So, so, one of the first things is, is, is getting your boat ready. And that is your batteries, you know, getting your batteries put in the boat properly so that they're not going to be busting loose and rolling around in the back of your boat. We've seen that uh, how many times? Oh, I mean, I've seen them. I've split helped guys. Half. I've helped guys. Yeah. Take out split in half batteries you and know, stuff. So a really good quality busted. strap, uh, retention tray tray. And, uh, the, and you know, the, you know, how many times when we change batteries, yeah. Is there a screw stripped out that's holding that tray down? Absolutely. A lot. So, you know, your tray is bolted down to the floor of your boat. Yep. And you, your your average lead acid battery life is, say, three years. So you don't ever check those screws right. until three years. Well, the vibrations of the boat loosen the screws up. Yep. And then the bouncing and the pounding and the road, the road vibration and the road pounding strips them. So now you have a tray that's being held in with two or three screws. Yeah. So, you know, now you go out on the washing machine and you make your run, <laughs> you know, and, you know, next thing you know, your battery breaks free. And now you have a 65 pound sledgehammer bouncing around in your battery yeah. compartment. Yeah, and it happens. And, and Snap, it's, snapping pumps off pumps and letting the ocean come in through the hole in exactly. your boat that used to be a pump. Exactly. So that's a lot where you see these boats that are getting that are filling up with water. It's. The pump, the something busted loose and busted that that hose. Yeah, that's the direct line right out to the outside of the ocean. Yeah. So, or to the water. It's like an ocean. You know, so that's that's a really <laughs> big deal is to get um, is to is to get your batteries you know put in with quality trays and quality straps. Th Marine and, has awesome mm, battery trays mm -hmm. with awesome so tie we, downs on them. Yeah, well, so we use a lot of that. Go ahead, Corbin. If if viewers are listening and they're like wait where do i get this stuff are you guys able to order all this or like yeah they could get they, I, mean, I know, they, I know a lot of they could come and talk to us because we we yeah. you know we know what to get and and, and uh, where to get it and how to get it we, so we can help you but yeah. the key is the key is is to just all we want people to do is to think about this um because people don't even think about this they buy a boat and they think okay it's rigged right from the from the yeah. factory it, it, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't most of the times it isn't yeah so you gotta you gotta kind of go in there and do it now now what would you say secondly george moving up moving up a little bit uh for me you have to be real diligent about torquing your motor bolts now in most modern boats that means your jack plate through the transom you have to torque those four bolts and then your outboard to your jack plate, you have to torque those four bolts. Yep. And then if you have a manual jack plate, you have to torque the lockdown bolts on the manual jack plate. Mm. And most times today, that's also holding your power poles. So you want to go ahead and torque your power pole bolts. Yeah. Um, and if you'd like your power poles to last a little longer, 
you want to torque all the pivot bolts on the power poles to the proper to the proper amount which or is... you might end up with your 250 strapped on the back deck of your boat yeah so um, because your bolts snapped off so say you did this i do that every day so say you did this and you knew you're going up to lake lake erie or whatever and you did this at home and you got yourself ready to go and you went up there and you fished a practice day and you came back to the hotel would you what would you do would you if it was really really rough yeah i would check the torque on those through the transom and motor to jack plate bolts yeah and power just a, pole just a check. it only takes a second yeah because yeah. what, what we do is we have the we have a breaker bar already done up with uh the proper uh, yeah you know with the proper uh size now if it's not rough i don't check them yeah you know i mean you don't have to check them uh if you're just running and you know driving miss daisy conditions i mean you don't have to check them yeah but maybe once a year but if you if you guys ever rode with somebody in rough water and turned around and looked at the motor you think it's coming off the boat. <laughs> I mean, it's really shaking around. You back think here the right back there. of the boat's coming off it's the boat. Really, I don't, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing how these boats stay together. Right? Yeah. It, it really well, is. what they do is they transfer that stress. All that movement is stress and energy, and it gets transferred through the jack plate, through the bolts, into the hull, and then the hull carries that as, as you know, part of its energy to, right. like, for lift and stuff. Right, but, right. You know, um, you got to check your bolts. Yep. So you got your batteries tied down. Yeah. You got your bolts checked. Yep. Now there's something on the front of your boat that can come flying back and cut your head <laughs> off. Lights, your trolling motor. Yeah. Uh, yep. And if you've ever put a trolling motor on your bolt on your boat, they're heavy. Yes. It's amazing that they don't snap the front of the boat off. Yes. Yeah. So I agree. you know, check the torque on your. And if you do mount your own trolling motor. Yeah. Do big, not use well nuts. No. Through bolt. Big giant washer. Fender washer. Lock washer. Nylock nut. Backup nylock nut. Yeah. Okay. Um, because you don't want that thing coming loose and stripping out and busting and, and flying back. And I can't even tell you how many tournaments in my life I've seen no trolling motor on that boat. He gone. And, you know, so graphs ripped off boats. Um, I had a graph ripped off the console on one of my bolts, boats in a Lake Erie tournament. I mean, it, it didn't rip the graph off the bracket. It ripped the bracket through the boat. So check your bolts. Check your tie downs. Now, I would like to address bilge pumps. Yes. So bilge pumps. It's an interesting Number thing. one. You should have multiple bilge pumps. Number one, you should have two bilge pumps. Yeah, yeah, you should have two, but you should have ba uh, at least one backup in your truck um, for when they crack in half and fall apart. Well, here's what you do on the big on the big water when it's going to be real rough. Yeah, I don't think you have to do this as much anymore as a, as a. I guess I guess you could. Well, if you've ever been on Lake Erie and filled your boat with water, they don't make enough pumps. Um, <laughs> so you. Here's your here's your setup on your pumps. You're gonna have a pump that's on an auto switch, and that auto switch has. A, if you look down on the bottom of your boat, if you're not familiar with this, it's a little flapper, and the water floats it. and And when it floats up to a certain level, it makes contact and turns the pump on, and pumps boat out. So it's kind of like the exact reverse of a toilet in the way that works. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the viewers out there that may not know. Well, it's like a toilet switch. bowl. When the, right. when, the, when, the, when the float gets to the top, the water turns off. Yep. This thing, when it flips to the top, it turns the pump on. So mm -hmm. that pump is always going to be a hot wired pump, which is a good thing if you ever leave your boat in the water overnight. Okay. So that pump's hot wired. It's going to come on whether your power to your boat's turned off or not. Uh, now, the second bilge pump needs to be on a separate circuit in other words if the if the if the fuse or the circuit breaker pops on the first one you don't want the second one also turning off so that's going to be on its own separate circuit now here's what the guys that run the big the big water do when it's really really rough they're calling for horrible conditions they have a third bilge pump that they carry in the cockpit of their boat usually they'll keep it in a hatch behind the seat but you'll see a lot of them, and this is what I used to do. I'd put it uh, on the floor of my boat. I'd put two strips of Velcro on the bottom of it and stick it to my carpet. 
and the outlet hose I would run like under where my legs would be when I'm sitting to drive and I would cable tie it to the handrail on my boat so that it was going out over the side. And then I had my cigarette adapter and I had this thing on the cigarette plug and I had it cable tied so the end was hanging right there. So if I did stuff a wave and fill my boat, my auto came on, I hit my other one and I plugged this one in. That would be for worst case scenario, which <clears throat> may happen. <laughs> so that's might, might have that's something that a lot of big water guys do. They carry that third bilge pump, uh, which comes in handy in other circumstances. If you have a live well pump that goes out on you, you can use it to pump your live well empty and then fill it back up with fresh water, so on and so forth. But what it's really useful for is when you're sitting in the driver's seat of your boat and the water that's in your boat is above your waist. Yeah. You know, you got to keep power to your big motor yeah. and keep going forward and have these pumps run while other waves come into your boat so that you can get back up on plane again. So that's your safety, uh, torquing your, your tie downs, your, 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 your good stuff. Yeah. So, you know, your graphs and stuff, make sure you, you know, your graphs are, are, uh, on good mounts. If you're making a long run in rough water, on the St. Lawrence or on Champlain or on Oneida, and it's going to be real rough, take your front units off and put them in a hatch. Yeah, if you know you're done for the day, just take them no, off. No, in the morning before you get to your spot. Well, if it's going to be rough, whenever Yeah, it is, I'm yeah. talking about if it's going to be real rough. Oh, okay. Yeah. Only if it's going to be real rough. Take your front unit or units off. Yeah, or, um, or if you have, like, our boat, we have, like, a ram mount up there. We just can unscrew it and just fold them down. Fold them down. Yeah, or if you have, like, a rock and roll mount that's, like, seriously bolted to your boat, you don't have to worry about that so much. But if you don't, the why, water pressure. Why, why take the chance? The water pressure can rip the mount, can rip the unit off the gimbals. Your mount held up fine, yeah. but the knobs were ripped off your unit, and you have two big holes in your case of yeah. your unit now. Now, so... That kind of covers, you know, there's other little things that, that people do, but that kind of covers, you know, the prep for your boat so that if you just do those couple of things right there, you, you know, you guys um, um, will be at least safe, ready for this, you know, and ready for a day like these these guys have had up well, on Lake Oneida for for two days. Yeah, they took a beating. And, you Check know. Your, hey, te also take a look at your rub rail bolts. If you're out on a really rough day of pounding, take a look at your rub rail screws you look at your bumper on your rub rail and if it's getting pushed way out the screw has backed out so yeah. go ahead and just kind of pry that rub rail out and torque those screws so that they don't strip out strip out create a, create more of a problem create more of a problem for you because yeah. some of these boats you know the top deck and the bottom deck part of the structure there is the rub rail so make sure you check well, that that, that helps hold the boat together and yeah. this stuff sounds like we're you know, building a hot rod, but it's not, it's not. that it, it, it doesn't take that long to do. <laughs> like those side, those side rail, rail bolts only happen so often. And it might only be two or three of them that you have to, yeah. that you have to tighten up and, and um, it's, it's not a big deal, yeah. but um, you know, so now you're all set, you got your boat ready to go. And now you hit the rough water and I don't know what happens to people, but when they get in rough water, they lose their friggin' minds. They do. And they feel like they have to, and you hear this all the time, man, I got to get on top of these waves. Sometimes, you, you know, and there's 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 times where you want to get on top of the waves. But most of the time you want to just kind of work with the waves, especially if they're big. And, you know, I'm talking some big water here. Yeah. Like these guys were these guys were in some big freaking water. Yeah, they were in some, you know, at the east end of that lake. They were probably had seven, eight foot waves down there. I've been in them down there. Wow. I surfed across some things to get over into South Bay down there. And um I was in some, I probably shouldn't have been down there, but I don't even know why I went down there at first. It was practice day. I don't even know why I went down there. It was with Jimmy Arnold, my brother-in-law. Wow. I thought he was going to die. It gets rough. It was bad. So people just, I, I always think people go way too fast in majority of the situations, Corbin. Yeah, yeah probably right. Probably too fast or too slow. I mean, I just see people come back in with their boats so beat up, and I look at the, all the all the water that I've been in, and yeah, I, I've, I've I've had to tighten up some rub rails bolts, like George says, but I never had hauls split. I never had trolling motors ripped off my boat. I never had 
That's crazy. Driving. Graphs ripped ripped off. Windshields blow. How many windshields have people? Callings missing from the big. Callings water? missing off of their stuff. I mean, you guys, you guys that 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 run that kind of water and you have that kind of damage, you don't know what the hell you're doing. You 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 really don't know what you're doing, and you need to stop and and learn something from somebody, or you're going to kill yourself next time out there. It's it's the, the big thing. The big thing in running rough water starts with your boat setup. Now, a lot of guys are running hydraulic plates today, so they can make these adjustments on the fly. But you need to have the ability to climb up a wave at maybe not too fast of a speed, maybe like 16 to 20 miles an hour, and then not have as your as your whole entire boat is in the air, kind of like this, not have the prop blow out which means it lost bite, it lost traction, and the boat comes sliding backwards back down the face of that wave. So, you know, that's part of your setup, and, and you want to find that out before you're in the tournament. So, George, do you, do you run a different prop up there, or do you run your same prop? Like, you know, some people change to a four Every a boat setup pitch, is or, different. Yeah. Every boat setup is different. I mean, there's, there's some boats that run better with a four-blade. There's some boats that run equally well with a three blade um there's some three blades out there that act like four blades there's that, some that are really really good there's some there's some of the some of the real big water pilots like the guys that, that live on the big big water day in and day out they run a uh five blade they run a merc high five so do you, what so like how about tackle distribution you know do you want all the weight in the front of your boat? Do you want it in the back? I mean, well, like, that, I read that article for Zal when Zaldane said he was going to New York and he took a lot of his weight out of his boat up front to allow it to slap waves better. And, you know, yeah, they, they want a lot of the weight behind the seats. Yep. That's yeah. where they want a lot of that weight. And, and, um, I was with, uh, um, some, some of these guys and you can tell, you know, all their heavy plastics and, and all that stuff is all behind the seats, you know, and the big the big sinker boxes and stuff are back there, and and uh, their their extra props and stuff are stuck back in there. Um, that's pretty important. Um, but what? Uh, so balance of the boat is 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 critical, but it's not. There's big boats, you know, they're big heavy boats. It's not like massively critical. That that's why you stuff that wave, right. and that's why you rip the whole trolling motor off, and that's why your your cowlings is is at the bottom of the of the river. It's it's not so much the balance of the boat, although it helps. It's not so much the bottom of the boat. Um, it's just it's just you know, you know knowing. Here's another thing. Here's here's another thing that's that's really important. Knowing your body of the water, knowing where north and south is, and where east and west is, understanding direction, understanding where the wind is coming from, knowing that the waves are stacking up here. And they're not maybe as bad over here. Right. You know, knowing the, the body of water, doing the research on the body of the water to find out, you know, where I mean, you, that's critical. That's that's I'll what it's all a, about. I'll give you a that's really what, that's what it's all about. I'll give you a perfect example of what Mike just said. And and it's a it it blows my mind away how many people I talk to that don't do this. If you're gonna fish Lake Oneida and you want to know what the lake's gonna be like the next day. You don't look at the weather report on TV. You look at the marine weather forecast. Marine forecast, yeah. Because these big bodies of water, they got their own winds and their own, you know, uh, waves and patterns that form because their of own weather patterns. Current, yeah. Uh, wind, tide. Um, yeah. You know, if it's a tidal water, you, you that well. If it's a tidal water. Then you have to have your forecast. Then you have to know your tides for the se section you're gonna you're gonna run. Yeah. Because obviously, when the wind goes against the current, those waves get much bigger. Uh, same thing for like the Thousand Islands. Um, I see I see Brent Nelson uh, on on our live tonight. He knows all about what I'm talking about because he spent a lifetime doing that. Yeah. Um. You know the the wind against the current but if you're if you're really cognizant of what's going on you know when that tide's going to turn and now those waves are going to cut back down again and that, that 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 has a lot to what to what um yeah you know, mike's talking about well even that so you know uh and and this is tricky on a place like oneida 
if the wind is uh like you know like northeast or southeast or something you know one side of that lake's going to be not as bad as the other right and you can run down one side of that lake now the tricky part with lake oneida is there's so many shoals and stuff so that's where really knowing your your body of water where you can run tight tight you know to uh get out of some of that bigger because you run that main channel down the middle of that freaking that freaking lake you're, doing, you're gonna take an you're, absolute you, you are, ass the, the current first of all that that, that channel's cut in, in in there it's i don't know if it's cut but it's it's a channel that runs directly through the center of that lake and there's it's there's a current on that thing and those waves will absolutely stand up in that well, sucker you know something and, else when you're running a place like oneida and you're and you got all those shoals um being able to read your graph. Right. This is when you realize when it's four footers on Oneida and you're navigating yep. and you're trying to pick your way through shoals and it's bad. Yeah. That's when you look at your five inch screen and you're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> my brother should have got me a 10 inch gong. Man, did I ever pick a bad time to save some money because you can't yeah. read. It's really hard to a five or a seven inch screen. And, and, and actually a nine inch can be a little challenging. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's especially if you're trying you know, to your boats fucking and, like this water's hitting you in the face and you're over you here. Can do trying with, to you can do it with the smaller ones. If they're, if they're mounted in the right spot, I, I, you know, but, but it's, it's really, you're my age. It's really critical to be able to see that equipment and then be able to, uh, you know, be able to run that and know where to run with the winds that you have um how many people come up that freaking channel there and um uh straight up the channel at uh at, at the susquehanna flats from the sassafras right into uh elk neck i mean they just run right up that thing because that's where the buoys are or from and instead middle of middle river or fr from middle river they come up through there and and they and the and the winds coming out of the northwest and they're running up the west side Woo! of that freaking thing. I mean, it's, it, or, or the east side of the river. It's like, what the heck, man? It's like, you're going to get yourself killed well, and, and people do it, you and, know? And, you know, to your point, you know, know the lay of your lake. Know your marine forecast. Yeah. Know what to expect. Have your prep done. Yeah. Don't drive like a lunatic. Don't drive but like a lunatic. there are times when you do need to get it, give it a little kick in the ass. You know, when you get in that real snotty chop, not necessarily like big waves, but, you know, uh, an aggressive chop, sometimes in that in that situation, you're better off jumping up into the 40-mile-an-hour range and literally skipping across the tops of them. Now, when they get bigger than that, you can't do that, but right. you'll, you'll take an absolute beating yeah. going slow in that two foot chop sure. or that one foot chop sure um i see uh william clute uh who's a big water pilot he's a saint lawrence um lake ontario pilot and you know he's running a lund walleye boat yeah know? and that 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 speaks for where he fishes you know that's that's another thing like what kind of boat do you run well that's from where you're from yeah he is from all day, every day, getting your ass kicked yeah. on big bodies of yeah. water. So, so, so he's running a big sided boat. You he know, said, "You know what? I'm done with the bass boat. I'm done getting you my know? ass whooped." Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, get, I don't care what bass boat. You I'm have. gonna when get me an Al Linder ride. Everybody's like, "Oh, I got the smoothest ride in my Phoenix. I got the smoothest ride in my Skeeter." Let and they're all something. good. You're you are all getting your ass whooped Whoa. on heavy water. I got the smoothest ride in my river raptor jet boat, Mike. You see me run that in three footers from the northeast we're down all, to the Sassafras. We're all getting our ass whooped, and that and that and there's times at night when I when I can't breathe properly because I'm like my back's locked up. It tells me that I've I've been riding in too much of this rough well, water. <laughs> you know the uh, the debate on brand A, brand B, brand C, brand D. We'll we'll, we'll table to another day. Simon Zer, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining us tonight. Antonio, go go Gomez. Ken go Wood. goes in the house. Philip, good. What's happening, guys? Thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, so, so that's kind of like the wrap up of that. We wanted to touch base on. Well, yeah, on, I mean, on what because there was a lot of there was a lot of shit got busted well, up up there. The last three events. You know, as we're talking about these events and talking about our, our live show and what we want to talk about, these last three events, it was glaring. 
It was. It was like yeah. we got to talk about this rough water glaring, stuff because you know? we, you know, we've been there. We've, we, you know, we now had, these guys are pros. Yeah, and they are, and that, and they are. But but all, but all of our customers and and you know me and George, you know, we've been at this game for you know thirty six years. You know, tournament fishing all over the country, George especially, and we've seen all these different conditions and been in them many many times over. And guess what? And broke a lot of stuff. We broke a lot of stuff. We've broke, learned broke some boats. We broke we we broke stuff and we learned, you know, what you have to do to keep these things put together. And you know what? We have a great network of people. We have the people telling us what we're trying to tell you guys tonight. We've had those people tell us this already, Corbett. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, I would say, Mike, the biggest thing that I've learned, and I'm not talking nuts and bolts, and I'm gonna ask yeah. you what the biggest thing is you learned, but yeah. I'm not talking, you know, torquing bolts and stuff. Yeah. That goes without saying. But the biggest thing for me. Running big water for long distances yeah. is very stressful. I mean, this this uh, Champlain tournament that they're on right now, yeah. I have driven from down where Ott is yeah. to Plattsburgh in literally 25 miles of six-footers and 40 miles of four-footers. Literally done it. Mm-hmm. So it's very stressful, and yeah. the, and the number one lesson I've learned on on Champlain, which I don't, I've taken more ass whoopings at Champlain than any place. L- the Saint Lawrence, Lake Erie, that's that's got me a few times. Yeah. Number one lesson I want to pass on: if you're if fishing a tournament, do not cut yourself short on time to get back. Therefore, you won't be stressed on the clock. Therefore, you can drive your boat properly the way you need to drive. and concentrate. Uh, that ride I was just talking about on Champlain, I ran the first 20 to 25 miles in honest-to-God six-foot rollers. And then I stopped. <laughs> and I asked my co-angler to stop talking to me because he was telling me how to drive, and I checked my fish, and they were good. I made sure that my water was good, which, by the way, make sure you have um, wine corks. plugs, or I was using wine corks, big, big, big corks. Make sure you have plugs for your overflows, because every time your boat stands straight up in the air, the water from your live well rushes out of your overflows. Yeah. Okay, sidebar. Sidebar. Overflow... Don't have your live well full to the max. Fill it three quarters or less. Put your pumps on constant recirc. Uh, put ice in your live well and rejuvenate before you make the long run. Have cut up pool noodles, which are the little floats that the kids use in the pool. Cut the pool noodles up to cover the top of the live well and plug your overflows. Okay? Or your fish will be dead when you get back from a 75 mile run in this kind of water. Yeah. Um, so that's my sidebar. But the biggest thing I learned is don't, don't have that clock putting the pressure on you. Cause you're already going to stress out enough and you need to concentrate when you're driving these boats on every wave. So that's my biggest lesson, Mike. Never yeah. be in a hurry. Pretty much. Rule number one. Pretty much. Yeah. Never be in a hurry. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. My, my thing, you know, really is knowing the, Knowing the body of water, knowing where the wind is coming from, and finding that leeward side to, to run or that leeward air, you know end to run, uh, and know where not to go, and yeah. put and put yourself into these situations. I know George said that you know uh, sometimes you got to do it, and and I and I think that's right. But for a lot of us guys, we don't have to do it. We don't have to put ourselves in those situations. If you're an elite series angler. And you have really super bad conditions, and 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 your fish are down, or you got to run for it, and you got to do it. I I get it. And then just slow down, take your time, get on. You know, you can get on top of a wave and not run fifty miles an hour. You can get on top of a wave and not run forty five miles an hour. You can get up there with that twenty to thirty mile an hour and be, you know, very soft ride. You're not beating your crap up. You're not killing your boat. You're not trashing everything. And you're not beating yourself up, number one. Yeah, you get to hit that hard one every now and then. That roger comes in and you hit that hard one. And just take your time and relax. If you relax, you don't get, you're not so stiff and you don't feel like somebody beats you up at the end of the ride, you know, the next day when you're trying to go to work. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and experiment a little bit. You know, there's, when you get in that stiff chop, uh, a stiff chop is like, that's ah, pretty bad. 
you know, when you're thinking to yourself, that's pretty bad, but yeah. it's not like big waves. Go ahead and, and kick it in the ass a little bit. Now, there's one part of your boat equipment that you're going to use, and your goal is to wear it out every time you're in rough water, and that's your trim lever. Yeah, trimming, trimming and tilting. So I like to drive uh, foot throttle, two hands on the wheel, and I have my trim levers here and here. I don't, I don't run a hydraulic jack plate. If, if I did, one would be hydraulic jack plate. The other one's trim. And you're using your trim a lot. Now, usually in that real rough water, you're trimmed down most of the way. But you, you're pick, you pick it up a little bit to kind of lift your bow up. And it depends if you're riding with them or going into them. Um, you'll use a little more trim when you're riding with them. Because uh, you can fall off of one and bury it into the next one. But don't be afraid to experiment a little bit on that on that speed. Sometimes, sometimes when you get in that what I call a stiff chop, which is a nasty, you know, foot tall to two foot tall, you know, wave. Getting up on top of them is actually the best way to go. And 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 and, and you're gonna be in that 40 mile an hour range, and your boat's just gonna respond real nice. It's just it's just gonna be a toon, 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 toon. Yep. And you're you're going to get that rogue wave that Mike was talking about every now and again, and you're going to have to adjust for that, and then get back in that rhythm again. So yeah. So Corbin, yeah. Corbin, you know what I like to ask Corbin about is you know, and same thing in a jet boat world. You know, for you guys that are jet boat guys, you know when when it may not be big giant waves, but it's the wind. What 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 do you pay attention to, Corbin? when weather rolls in i mean what or, but the night before the, the 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 you know getting ready for uh, uh, that kind of stuff so in, in terms of like tweaking i always make sure i have plenty of gas i mean that's definitely for sure uh make sure your batteries are charged um obviously all of them don't go out there with a half charge crank a battery or anything like that um maybe check your bilge pumps every once in a while but like the big thing for me and like running what I call rough water with a jet boat is, you know, understand that the wind can push the chutes over, you know, especially if it gets low. Like, you, in other words, if the wind's blowing left to right and you know that you need to run between these rocks, you know, don't be afraid to take a step back, look at it before you run, because I've seen it where you actually think you're in the chute, but the wind blows the chute over and you mm -hmm. miss the chute particularly at pilot rock, you know, that's, that's mm. a prime example of low water. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the other thing I do is I use the hell out of my throttle. I mean, I'm constantly rare. Yeah. And you know, how George is talking about like skipping on top of the waves. Yeah. Like I'll jam it. And then when I get on top, I'll, I'll lay off a little bit and I'll hit it again mm -hmm. because every, and I'll also take, and I'll cut them at an angle if I can, and I have enough water because when you run these waves in an angle in a jet, you know, a, you don't tend to get as wet as long as the wind's not blowing that way. But the other thing you're able to do is you're able to be in complete control of when you cut back and you don't blow out. Sure. So, like, for me, I don't cavitate, um, and every jet runs different. Uh, you know, some some boats handle rough water better than others. Uh, they say the heavier the boat, the better it handles rough water. I, I don't know. I mean, all yeah. the G3s I ran handled it great. My new boat loves rough water. Um but it's just a it's just a matter yeah. of you know play it smart you know the biggest thing when you're running a jet is if you blow out and you cavitate you lose power so you're not in control so the ability to just kind of take a step back and say okay my boat will go 47 mile an hour but i don't need to go 47 i can run these waves at 25 to 30 that's what i do yeah you know yeah and and of course i run the troughs sure because you do get in some rough water in a jet boat. Oh, yeah. you do, you yeah, do. You know? I mean, and especially if you're a if you're a one boat owner. Yeah, um, I, I've seen guys like Corbin and and other people I know who are jet boat guys. I've seen them participating in tournaments on the Potomac River, the big Upper water. Chesapeake Bay. Yeah. You know, big water, and you know, again, weather report, right? Tide report. Uh, know know the limitations. Yeah. Yeah, but, by the same token, you don't want to beat your boat to death. But, I mean, like, prime example, in that Ike tournament last year when I ran to the SAS, you know, that wind came up. And, I mean, Mike Mike was fishing with the palm when I came around the corner, and he's like, what? And, <laughs> I mean, and by the time we had to go back, next thing you know, the old big, big 
party boats were out and the waves got bigger and bigger. Obviously, if you're in a jet, bring rain gear, probably wear it or yeah. board shorts or whatever. But yeah. I mean, you uh, can safely navigate. Getting wet's part of the deal with the jet boat. Just uh, make sure your bilge pumps work. I, I I would I would also add that when you're dealing with a jet boat, and these because we got a lot of jet boat guys that watch this, and you know, last year we had a very low water episode uh, period at a time. This year we're coming into another low low time. I mean, right now it's uh, it's uh, four foot, maybe a little below four. Below four, it's three it's, three nine nine. It was, it's yeah, so it's just that four foot. So there, it starts to it starts to be where you got to start watching, you got to start reading the water and being able to read the water, and and um, going out fishing and getting to a spot that might be 12, 14 miles away and then turn. And then at 10 o'clock, the wind comes up and chops the water all up. You have to turn around and go back through it. Yeah. It's super hard to read that water coming back through. So if you're not comfortable with that, then know the wind, know what, how know. the wind's going to affect it. When's it going to come up? Yes. And you know, and get the hell out of where, where it's dangerous before then. And I want to touch on this because Mike, you and I kind of ran into this on Sunday, right? We put ourselves in a sketchy situation. We were catching fish. We didn't want to leave. We pushed it to the max, and then we ran. As soon as that wind started to kick up, and we looked down river, and I was like, say, head on a swivel. Yeah. We could see the storms were coming. It was coming. And, you know, at that point in time, usually when the, a lot of the big storms come up in the summer on the river, they come from the south. Yeah. And the problem with south wind goes against the current. So, you can't see that little ripple that's actually a rock. You can still see some of your well-defined shoots, but yep. you just have to adapt and overcome. And you got to pay attention, not be in a hurry, leave yourself extra time, and yep. just take a step back and realize that, you know, if you're in a jet boat and you're in shallow water, you're in a semi-dangerous situation. So, yeah. like, and I don't want to say dangerous isn't like, oh, my gosh, like something no. happened, but, you know, I always tell, like I told my clients, when it gets low, I'm like, hey, pay attention, because you don't want somebody behind you messing with their phone off balance and heaven forbid you hit something that throws them out of the boat you know you, you just want to make sure that you always put yeah, you don't want to tear your stuff up man you don't and want yeah. you don't want to tear your equipment yeah. up I, i've done there i've been there i you know I, I had you know big balls at one time and and <laughs> <laughs> i think it was yeah i think i think what happened to me was you know it took a good hit for me to 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 kind of calm down and be smart about it but i was young you know a lot younger back then in those days so we we did a lot of we did a lot of, of uh, challenging or ch took a lot of chances, but you know just know the water, know the know the direction that the wind's blowing. The same thing comes true with it with with this for the jet boats is knowing knowing when the wind's going to pick up, knowing when to get the heck out of the, the tight spots when you know it's going to be hard to read the water, and um, don't go to places that you just don't know if it's going to be windy. Right. You know if if it's if they're calling right. for a fifteen mile an hour wind, go to Go to a place you know really well and that you know you're not going to have any problem in rougher water, you know, so you can read the water and just, yeah. and uh, because I think that's that's important too. So, yep. anyway, um, I think it was a great segment, you know, as one as, as a segment, we, me and George uh, kind of looked at each other and we were like, holy crap, we need to talk about uh, rough water, rough water boat driving, rough water, get the boat ready. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then hopefully this stuff helps you guys out, um, you know, and, um, in, in your future future trips to big water because i know everybody wants to go to the thousand islands everybody wants to go to lake oneida champlain everybody wants to go to champlain and up there it always blows that's why the trees grow like this at the bend well, like i that. say we i say we we should all go together yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> so we got some more to talk about in the next segment of this is called uh tackle talk and we're gonna Ooh. do that right now So uh, this is our favorite segment of the whole entire uh, show, and that is uh, talking about tackle. Oh, we love yes. tackle. We love messing with tackle. We love. Are we tackle junkies? We're tackle junkies. Oh yeah, we're tackle. Do junkies. we carry too much tackle in our boat? No. Well, Do we ever have too many rods rigged up? George, 
No. I didn't think so. I, I mean, <laughs> and, I and, and you know what I Is like? Your mask? Oh, that's a sore subject right now. <laughs> I was just checking because, uh, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the game. I mean, we really enjoy on our fun fishing days experimenting with new baits. Oh, yeah. I mean, we take pride in it. We talk love about it. some too. We love it. We love experimenting with new baits. We love, and we know that you guys, yeah, speak the language. Yeah. And you know what I love about Tackle Talk, George, is that, I mean, it's kind of like you being with Lawrence Hummingbird and Garmin. We speak the good, bad, and the ugly. I mean, yeah, we speak the good things, the bad. You know, we're, you know, it's it's awesome. It's like, yeah. hey, this this is what we got. Other and, than yeah. other than my, um, you know bringing together of the electronic brands under one sponsorship <laughs> umbrella, yep. which, you know, unifying them. <laughs> yep. That is something that doesn't apply here. Right. They, because it probably will never happen again. And it was done mostly for, you know, a knowledge thing, but well, yeah, we're not affiliated well, with any. No, we're not. Company. We're not. We like to talk. Tackle. Tackle. And we're, and we're not, and we're not looking mm. to like tear down people's, you know, if we no. find a if we find a flaw in a bait or something, we're trying to point out what's new, what's hot, what we like, how we're going to use it. Yeah. Right? Am what, I right? Yeah. What's and, new and, what's... and what differentiates for it from somebody else? And what yeah. do we learn? And what do we learn? What do we learn? Yeah. yeah. Um. So I, I one, one section here that I that we do want to talk about is some of the products that have been coming in and some of the shipments that we have been getting, so that you guys know that you know, maybe maybe you were waiting for stuff to come in oh and, yeah and uh you know and you were you were you were you were here you were on the website and it wasn't there or you stopped in the shop and it wasn't here so so you know this past week we uh we gathered a bunch so far more tackle. this week it's been a big week we gathered a bunch of tackle and we got um, a massive uh we had a massive zoom shipment yesterday whoa yeah. well there's still there's two big giant carts right back here you guys now it was them. a skid there's a, oh yeah so there's a bunch yeah. there, but there's a bunch of stuff there there's zoom that came in and then, have, then there was a big robo worm we received a, a big big yeah. robo worm yeah. uh shipment you know those guys are cool they are cool they are a a small but yet very focused company out there in california which i don't even know how they can stay in business operating a, a business in california my hat's off to them <laughs> they're awesome people to work with yeah and um, I was, I was actually stocking the, the robo uh, worm shipment. I, I was, I was blown away again. And we've been a robo worm dealer for since, you know, ever. Mm -hmm. I was blown away again by the consistency of the colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I hung up, you know, I don't know, uh, a hundred pounds of robo worms today. Yep. And I'm telling you, the colors were the, 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 I was looking Beautiful at the stuff. desert craws in in like four different sizes. They were all perfect. Beautiful wow. stuff. So we got we're reloading on Robo. We we're, yeah, we're, there's we're still some, there's still a couple holes there, but there well, we got the yeah. we got the bulk of the stuff in. Heavy duty um, zoom. Yeah, heavy duty zoom, and then we also um, got in some Shimano rods, some different ones, some some more poison adrenas rolled in. Well, we got uh, the we got the new models of poison, yeah. the new models of Zodius, including the. The glass cranking rods. Yeah, they're, with, they're impressive, George. They, yeah. They well, are. they they were they were they were earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um so we got a lot of um Z Man. Z Man. We got a huge Z Man shipment in today. Yeah. Absolutely huge. Including a yeah. lot of new baits. Uh oh. A lot of their iCast releases. Mm -hmm. So I mean they haven't brought everything out yet um well obviously let's talk about the, the the couple that we have yeah uh that we did get from them well what um, they did what they did what they did was they brought out the the new helicross um guys were asking me about those the other day and and um we didn't actually have them until yesterday yeah so Ye the hella the helicross is a um mark daniels um there you go corbin that's this that's sprayed grass color it's a it's a it's a mark daniels uh junior design and it is a uh flipping bait it is a swim jig trailer it's a chatterbait trailer 
Um, bunch of cool colors. Yeah, all the all the great colors for trailers like gotcha. the blues, the sapphire blues, yeah. the black blues, the green pumpkins. Yep. The pearl whites. Yep. Uh, fire crawl. Yep. You know, fire crawl is a big thing. Uh, Z Man extended fire crawl out. Um, into the into the goat. Into the the whole goat family. Is now being done in a fire crawl. Um, yeah, I kind of can't see it too good. Yeah, I know what it is. Um, it's orange. It's comes orange. In, it comes in all three of the goats. Um, comes in the razor shed. Comes in the turbo crawl. And all that stuff's in stock. So if you're looking for fire crawl to team up with your fire crawl hammer jacks, uh, they are a perfect match. Yeah, and you can go to the links there. That that's good, Corbin. Perfect, right there. They can see the color really well. Uh, and you guys can go to the links that we're post posting up here. You can click on those to see a better picture of the colors that are available on our website. They are loaded on there. They're ready to go. Um, and uh, so that's those those two baits. They they also came out with that thing's sweet. That I t I tell you right now that that. I'm did gonna you, get. Did my... you ever use one of them on on a chatterbait? Oh yeah. yeah, these things are great. They're, They're awesome. badass. They're durable, man. It's a razor shad. I don't know if you guys ever tried that, but Caitlin, you can put that razor shad on there too. The Z-Man razor shad. This this as a chatterbait. That's Seth Fighter's go-to trailer for the jackhammer. He uh, fishes a. I mean to tell you, that thing is. Seth Fighter fishes a green pumpkin jackhammer, a black blue jackhammer, and a clear water shad jackhammer, and he pairs them up with. Uh, these razor sheds. razor sheds it's really nice it's it's but i like this new fire crawl color yeah that's pretty that's pretty sweet i'm gonna have my pickup truck painted in fire crawl. um <laughs> so george what's the other I new like product it. that they they came out with that's that we talked i think we, we said uh, it's coming yeah so wasn't that that fatty turbo yeah fatty... so they did a swim worm uh they did a turbo fatties which is basically like a it's basically like a six inch fatties. It's a fatty a, fatty Z with a swim tail on it. So a it's turbo. It's a, it's a swim. It's a swim worm. Right there, Corbin. Just hold it. Hold it right there once. Let, let it focus. Uh, move it to your right a little bit. Right there. Back back a little bit towards me. Right there. Right there. That's it. That's it. The picket straight up in the air. Ah, there you can see it. Beautiful. That's the. Uh, that's the tail. That's a turbo tail. That's a thumper. So, you know, you're talking swim worm. Yep. You're talking flip worm. Yep. You're talking shaky head worm. Yep. You're talking whatever you want to do with it, worm. So, Six inch. Beautiful. And, you know, another George. thing about that, George, is pretty good. Is it's got some good bulk to it. It's not a thin worm. No, it's a fatty. It's a Yeah, it's definitely a little bit bigger and thicker than uh, than a speed speed worm. It's, or, it's, it's, like a me, mag, it's like a mag speed worm. Yeah. Well, see, to me, it looks like a swimming Senko. It almost has a tail. It does. It you does. Know, the way it's it, got because it's got that little paddle tail it's on it. It's thicker man. than that though. It's but thicker. I'm, I'm talking about the back. Oh yeah, 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 tail, yeah. It, you know? it does. It has like a paddle style. I don't know. It's a poop it's, foot. Yeah. It's a turbo. It's a swimming worm. Yeah. It's a turbo. Looks awesome. It's, it's a, a swimming worm. It's a shimmy. Gives you a shaky and a shimmy. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about the helicross. I'll be uh trimming my uh uh Clearwater Shad jackhammer with a pearl helicross at the tournament Sunday. I can tell you that much. Mm. Um, and at the tournament on Saturday, I'll be trimming my green pumpkin shad jackhammer with a green pumpkin helicross. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So pretty excited. And, uh, you know, we'll, 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 we'll continue to update you on what we found out about fishing these. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're, we're just we're really excited to, to get some new stuff in yeah we're we're gonna mess around with that uh a, a good bit and see what happens with uh, a lot of that stuff we got a couple other baits we want to mess with um that uh we talked about one is that that um and we talked about these already but is that that jerk bait from berkeley the stunner stunner yeah the stunner the stunner jerk bait i'm really excited about that thing um the more I the more I talk about it, and the more and I sell them here in the store, the more I sell them and mess with them and talk with them, the more I see it's a different bait. I, I I'm kind of excited to fish that. I like the plus one version. George, plus I, I think we need one of them for Saturday. 
Stunner. I like the plus the one version. Yeah. You guys should be throwing jerk paints this time of year. So I got a I got a, a new rod I want to talk about. We never we never uh, do a whole lot with it. Here we go. I got uh, uh, a couple weeks ago uh, during my absence, the boys here told you about the new line of G Loomis. Yes. G as in George. <laughs> C as in champion. X as in extremely awesome. <laughs> the GCX. I knew that was coming. Um, which is a upgrade of the E6X. So the E6X has taken a upgrade. It has become a GCX. New name. Yep. N- new, new name. New, new graphite. New, new new colors. New guides. New got everything. Some, we got some red up in the house. New new uh um, tapering stuff. Tell us about this thing, George. Well, I mean, it depends on the blank. Uh, so they, they did, if you're, uh, if you're a G Loomis fan, you know, you have your MBR series Mm -hmm. and your Mm -hmm. SJR series, and Mm -hmm. they're all made in this new GCX. So you have, you know, 783, 783, 843, 844, 844. 904. And, and they are what you expect them to be. Um, and then they do, then they do the jig and worm series. 852, 853. Yeah. The thing about those, they're extra fast. Uh, extra fast. 871. Mm-hmm. 893. Yeah. 893, 894. Yeah. Right? Disregard most of those numbers. <laughs> yeah. Those, uh, we don't know what they are. But the jig and worm rods and the jig and worm spinning and casting are extra fast tapers. The MBR rods are fast tapers. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so they did all those. They did uh, flipping rods, yep, flipping and punching rods, spinner bait. They did spinner bait rods, jerk bait rods, and then in the spinning series, of course, drop shot rods. They did some split grip. Uh, so this is a uh, jig and worm rod. So your jig and worm rods are going to have your split grip, both in casting and in spinning. Eight oh two. Yep. Um. Medium, that's a medium power. Medium, extra fast. Fine. Six, um, eight. Everything rod. Everything rod. Ned rig, tubes. Swim bait. Swim bait. Fluke. Was I fluking with that the other day? Yes, you were. Is that the one? Yes, you were. That was pretty sweet, man. Exactly yeah, so that's you're, the exact one you were using. So yeah. you're... Um, that, that, thing, that thing's everything. Everything. Your MBR small rods are all full cork. So whenever you pick up an MBR, this is a... 782 yep. SJR, which is uh, the original series. That's going to be a full cork. This is a 6.6 six virgin version. Now, check out the guides on there, Mike. Yeah. Those are those are called Sea Guide. Sea Guide. Sea Guide is the brand. So, you know, for forever and a day, Fuji owned the guide market. Right. Yeah. So, I'd like to point out for you guys that a lot of manufacturers are now using a brand of guide called Sea Guide. Okay. Um Sea Guide is uh got a little bit of a different twist on things and they're very, very nice. So they're running the Sea Guide Hero One series uh on the GCX. I'll tell you they're they're also doing it on the Compre uh rods and for $99 you're definitely going to want to check out that compre rod with the sea guide bad to the bone and St. Croix also is using the sea guide platform on a number of their rods um i think most of their new rods from St. Croix are going to ship the first week in November and we're basically stocking like 90% of every new rod they brought out for next year. So you'll be able to see what they're doing with Sea Guide. But uh, a lot of companies are using them now. They're a, they're a, a high-end guide. Um, and, the, and if you look at the, the set of guides, uh, particularly on the spinning rods, okay, so fish and rod guys have their own language, and they call a set of guides the guide train. 
and they take into consideration the bend of the rod, the taper of the rod. But on a spinning reel, think of it this way. The diameter of the spool and how big that loop is when you cast coming off that spool. So the next time you're out with your spinning rod, crank off a cast, kind of hold the rod up and look at the line coming off the spool and see if it's slapping the blank real hard. Um, your, your rod guy has to, has, to, has to get a... Your guy that designed your rod, he has to get a he has to get a happy medium there from the size so- because he doesn't know what size reel you're going to put on the rod. He knows what he wants you to put on the rod, but you might go one size smaller or you might go one size bigger, and that's in a lot of cases is perfectly acceptable, right, Mike? Mm-hmm. So yeah, absolutely. That that guide train has to take those loops and step them down. So uh, yeah. the sea guide has a very unique shape to it. Um, it actually is also on the casting rods, but obviously they're much smaller. And because they're so light, there's more of them. Yeah. Because I, if you add a lot of weight, I can't to wait blank, to fish them. I, and and, and the guy that I really want to see fish them is Corbin because you fished a lot of E6X. I like to see what you know how. That's what my client rods are. Yeah, I like to see yeah. how you think these things stack up to. You know, for all you guys out there that know I'm on a tackle ban, <laughs> my tackle ban's been lifted, baby. <laughs> yeah, I like to see. I like yeah. to see you get some of these in your hand and try. This them was out. An eight. Yeah. This was an eight fifty four. Yeah, seven one. Flipping rod, pitching yeah. rod. Uh, somebody's rod. asking if we ever fished the eight ninety three. Um, we fished eight ninety three and anything else? Eight ninety four. Uh, yeah, I fished the. I fished the. Uh, I fished a jig and worm rod 893, the JWR 893. Yeah. And I will say this if you like to fish a like Sanko, five inch Sanko with an eighth ounce bullet weight. Yeah. Type of a, that type of a rig, that rod is freaking sweet. It's seven five. So, you know, you got to like a little bit of a longer rod, but right. that is a sweet Texas rig setup for. You know that eighth to quarter ounce bullet weight. Mm-hmm. Um, I I'll tell you, man, if you get on a, if you get on a wicked Sanko bite, man, where you're like casting a a lightly weighted five inch Sanko to a grass line, that that rod is that rod is money. What's up, Kenwood? How you doing, buddy? George. Yes, absolutely. We will be stocking the Corrado rods as they come available. We have no idea when that's going to be, but we will have them. We'll have everything yeah. everything new. So. Um, yeah, the Corrado rods have taken a facelift, and we'll break those down. Yeah, we'll break yeah, them all when down. When they come in. Um, you got something, Corbin? Well, they also make it in a crankbait rod, too. This this comes in a crankbait yeah. rod, too. Yeah, it comes 843 in a, and an 845. And a 783. Yeah. Oh, it does come in a 783? Yep. Okay. yep. Yeah. Yeah, the crankbait rod is really mm-hmm. nice. These are all available right now in stock, ready to roll. We got a ton of them, so, you know, we, you know, you know they are they are available. Um, you guys can come in, check them out, or buy them online, and we, we'll get them shipped out to you right away um 250-ish range yeah um, two, 239 to yeah. 259 239 to 259 so that so you know it's a it's a it's a very affordable high quality graphite rod and they feel great and they're going to fish great i'm sure of that um so check them out plus we have swag yeah when you buy your g Lumis rod and your little rod tube gets shipped to you oh. there'll, there'll be a surprise inside the rod tube Oh, surprise. Boy. Order one surprise, up today. Surprise, surprise, surprise. You bet, Kevin. Thanks for listening. Thanks, everybody, for listening tonight. We got we, yeah. we got to get going, man. This is oh, all right. This show's been dragging on. What do you got, Corbin? You want to talk about something? Say 58, boys. We'll I'll, talk about something. I'll save it for next week. You can talk about something if you want to. Well, I mean, especially. You got, you got lots of stuff? Huh? Especially if it's tied into what we've been talking about. You got tackle? Oh, I got some tackle. What do you got? I got. Uh, I mean, Mikey, I got yeah. the, we were talking about this, the yeah. Picasso squeaker. Yeah. Buzzbait. We, we, we got a chance to go out. We fished Yes, we did. Week, that's right. We did and fish we that. caught some fish on it. And uh, the reason why I want to talk about it is because I had people, when I was covering for George being out, they came up and said, you have the Jacob Wheeler Buzzbait. Yeah. Okay. And you guys know I like the Jacob Wheeler Buzzbait, the yeah. accent one. This thing right here. Is bad to the bone. Mm. Okay. It is going to replace all of them. 
I throw the quarter ounce. It's got that same small blade as the finesse. So you got the small silver blade, very, yep. very similar. And the three eighths has the same as the bigger one. So it works out great. It's got a super sharp hook. Yeah. Great collars, durable squeals. Yeah. Right out of the pack. Yeah. And I mean, catches fish, man. Well, we, we talked about that when we first got it in and we didn't get a chance to fish yeah. it yet. Well, we both got a chance to fish it. I fished it yep. on Sunday. Um, and what I noticed about it is it, you can really slow down with it. Yes, you can. You can. It pulls hard, hard through the water. And what I mean yep. by that is it gathers a lot of water up, and it holds the 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 the, the lift very easily, and it yep. keeps it keeps it where you can slow it down. And um, we didn't have the greatest conditions for buzz baiting, and they were still eating it. Yep. There's the there's the thing I like about it is the freaking hook in that thing. It's sharp, isn't it? Sharp as all get out. It's, it's long. Yeah. It gets it's back in the back of the skirt. They don't miss it. I yeah. we, we we caught a couple of fish on it on Sunday. Like I said, we didn't catch a lot because it wasn't the deal. But the ones that blew up on it got it. Period. Yeah. I caught a toad on it on Saturday. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it was it, first it, fish I caught. I'm like, whoa. Well, that first fish I caught on it was wasn't bad. Yeah. That was in that yeah. that sort of stained water. It was a little bit off color. wasn't the greatest conditions, but it. I, I wanted to throw it, and man, we caught we caught a nice one on it. So, um, that's that one. What else you got over there, Corbin? Well. I could tell a story about the uh, the braid and uh, well, you know, yeah, the the supply. I'm I'm hoping that we can get the some. Pro more the problem with the braid story, yeah, is it probably goes back to the installation process. I don't know. It, I I, I don't as, as as with uh, most braid problems. Yeah. I don't know because I let I let a lot of it out, reeled it back in, and it still happened. It's not tight enough. It's I've never I've never had it wrap around guides on casts. Like yeah, that. it's not on tight enough. So um, we'll save that one then. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I believe that I believe George the was there. Ones. He saw everything. Right. I mean, I, Mike Mike fished it. I, I, I fished so it. long story short, I got this Daiwa J braid because Power Pro's been out of stock, cause, and I needed eight and ten pound braid, and uh, I got the four strand and the J four. Yeah, and, and that just, was it was eight pound test and ten. I, I think one we, with ten one with eight. All right. Well, I think I think I was fishing the eight, right? Uh, ten. I was fishing I, a ten. Yep. Well, you fished them both because you used both of them. Oh, okay. And it's just, I mean, in the higher, you know, in in the higher, uh, poundages, I think it's gonna be great. Yeah. But for spinning rods, man. It's light, just you gotta watch it. Like I've never had something not around the guides as much as this, and yeah. I, and I've been out five days yeah. since I put it on. So yeah. it's just it's it's a continuous ongoing. And what, and what George is trying to say is if you put it on, you got to make sure you put it on tight. But right. that that line, it's just it's limper than I like for a four strand. Yes. I like a stiffer four strand yes. and you have a lot less problems with it. Yes. And it's a little limper than I than, than, than what I like. And, and you're going to you're going to run into those types of problems with that type of line. Right. And it was a battle. It, it was a challenge. And it was a challenge for multiple people. It was a challenge. Yeah. Well, um, the biggest I mean, we see a ton of braid problems in the shop here yeah from all brands and 99.9% .9 of the time it's the installation of the line because it's, braid is not easy to put on a reel yeah but you have stiff braids and you have limp right. braids and you have in between right. braids this is one this is that one before it stiffened it up you know what i mean it's going to be great on a bait caster but i don't recommend it for a spinning rod yeah Sorry, George. It's just no, I'm not. I'm not. I, you know, I mean, I'm Mike, just saying Mike that most yeah. of the problems I and it see does, with, and, and it does. But most of the problems I see with braid or installation. Yeah, I know. Problems. But if if you understand what's going on with this line, like I've I've firsthand witnessed yeah. it. You, you know, it's we're not saying it's bad line. It's just it's not a good line for light line casting. No. What we were casting, we were trying to make really violent casts. Long casts. With long a fluke, casts with a fluke in clear water with a leader on it. Right. That has and a lot of line it's twists. too limp. It's too limp for that application. And you were getting, you were getting wind knots number one. You were getting wrapped around around the the guide number two. Yep. A lot of tip tip wrap, much more so than you would normally have. Well, and not and the thing is, it wasn't even just a tip wrap. It was getting ca caught on the first guide and tying no, around that's that what guide. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, it was you know the first yeah. guide wrap, but also tip wrap. Yeah, and much more so than any other one that I've dealt, ever dealt with. Right. I'm I'm used to getting tip wrap with braid, and we all get right. pissed at it, especially light braid. Right. So, you know, just keep an eye on that. And and yeah, for me, yeah. like I use a lot of regular OG four strand power pro. Like that's yeah. what I use for this technique is eight yeah. and ten pound power pro. Yeah. Four strand. I'll use super slick from time to time too. Well, but 
they're comparing they're, apples to apples, four strand to four strand. Yeah, there's there's no comparison. Well, and I gotta tell you, the uh, Power Pro went through a transition because at one time they were lip, little little limp too, mm -hmm. and uh, the v, that's why they call it V two. Yep, they stiffened things up, they made it right, they got rid, rid, rid of a lot of the problems. So so um, um, uh, just a heads up on that. Number two is uh, the other thing we fished over the weekend a lot, and what we've been fishing a lot the last couple of days is fluke fishing. Yes. And uh, you had a chance to fish the couple of different flukes. Yeah, so I want to talk about just a couple of different fluke style baits. I mean, when it comes to flukes, everybody always talks about the Zoom Super Fluke. Yeah. You know, that's that's the standard to go by. But sometimes, as you guys are talking about wind, yep. okay, you need something that you can cast further or get down quicker. Yeah. Uh, Two of my favorites, and I've used them both, and they both catch a lot of fish, are the KVD Perfect Plastic. Heavy. Heavy. Heavy, 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 heavy. That is a now, totally heavy piece of plastic. And and it's awesome, but you usually get one to two fish out of them. So the durability, it's it's kind of a push. Yeah. Um, But yep. you definitely get that advantage where you're on that fluke bite and you get that little bit of chop, and you're like, oh, my gosh. You know, yeah. the, the wind's blowing. You see the slick coming. Yeah. And it's kind of like taking that bow in your line. So, I mean, it's one of those things you got to have. Same with the Berkeley, Berkeley Power Bait fluke. Great fluke. It's really like, durable. It's like in between yes. weight-wise. Weight yes, yes. But you still get the – this is this is probably the most durable one that I've found so far. Really, yeah. Um, But, I mean, it, it all depends on depth range of what you're fishing. I mean, when I'm fishing two foot of water, yeah. I'm going to try to use the zoom one as much as I can because you're not going to be on the bottom. But, right. Uh, but, yeah. There's so, a time and a place for those. Th there's that's a time heavy and ones. a place for all of them. And that's what's unique about that Perfect Plastics, man. That thing. Yeah. Heavy. And and <clears throat> comes in a four inch. Just saying, don't sleep on the four inch. <laughs> so that's a good that's a good little tip. But uh, but yeah, yeah. I, mean, I just wanted to kind of talk about that because I know we spent a lot of time fluking the fluke bites on fire for everybody around here. You know that that is fishing the river, and yep. as the wind comes up and the water things change, people will be like, oh my gosh, I was on a fluke, and you know I couldn't get them to eat the fluke because I couldn't. It was floating on top of water. Well, that's when you go to these types of things. Exactly. So, yeah. Good yep. stuff. And we were catching them on bubblegum also. Bubblegum. Uh, anything or you caught them on bubblegum. Yeah. Don't be afraid to throw that bubblegum. It's stupid as hell, but I don't know why they eat it. <laughs> don't forget watermelon red. <laughs> <laughs> bubblegum was working. Yeah. So, well, yeah, we, that's. We, we appreciate that, Corbin. Thanks for the insight yep. on those. Try those baits. I'm telling you, that buzz bait's hot. Those, uh, those super fluke bite is on, so make sure you throw those. Check out all these products on sfttackle.com or stop in our shop here um, in uh, Columbia, Pennsylvania for all you guys who haven't been in, for all you guys that have been in. You better get in here quick because we got some great stuff uh, loaded back in, stuff that you were looking for and stuff that's not going to be here very long. So make sure you you uh, come in and check it out um, as quick as you can. Uh, rods and reels are rolling in every day. Keep checking on the website for stock. Um, cause this, again, as soon as these stuff comes in, it goes right out the door. Um, but check our website for the, for the stats. You can call us up, put them on a credit card order. We'll hold it for you and take care of you. So thank you so much for everything. Thanks for stopping by another edition of tackle shop live. And we'll see you guys next time here at the tackle shop. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for stopping. sunny day a right there you took my breath away a young and pretty you was it just a dream the next day you called me up you told me i'm your little buttercup you came over and you fell into my arms well i know what i feel please tell me your love is real you make me smile when i think of you if i down my neck I thought we crazy from just the thought of you a long blonde hair and your beautiful smile your sense of humor makes it all worthwhile don't make me wait it's not a funny game 
You know just what I feel 